Super Pride 80. The question is, who will outscore whom? Well, Bob, I'll tell you, the way I see it, it's a crucial game for both teams. They're both 2-2. Two and two. Both have had outstanding records the past 10 years. Uh, Pitt has the great defense. Florida State, of course, the great offense. I think the game depends on the turnovers today, Bob. If Pitt hangs on to the ball, they got a chance to win it. They've turned it over three times the last two games in each game. Florida State, if they don't turn it over, they'll win it. So it's a close one, and the balls will be in the air, as you said. No question about that. Tab Douglas, the Pitt injury report, and anything else you care to say about the Panthers? Well, Darnell Stone will not be playing. He's out four to six weeks. He has a wrist injury, so that means Chucky e. Scales will get his first collegiate start today. The question is, Chris Jellick, the backup quarterback coming into this game behind John Conjemi, had a great practice week this week, and I question if Conjemi has trouble with the pit offense today, will we see Chris Jellick? Something else, Froggy Morris, if you flip the coin, the pit offense has been troublesome the last couple of weeks. The Florida State defense hasn't come up with a big play and has given up 35 points per game. So we're looking at direct opposites in this game. Tell you one thing, ladies and gentlemen, no matter where Florida State happens to be on the football field, they'll come a running at you. They'll come a throwing at you. Stay tuned for what'll happen. A lot of action. We'll be back with the opening kickoff right after this. Looks like it's going to be one of those shootouts, and we now are watching as the Florida State Seminoles two and two on the year against the Pitt Panthers, and they're two and two. And uh, we're getting ready for the captains to go out. It'll be Tom Flynn and Jim Sweeney will be going out. Uh, between the officials from the 50-yard line to meet the three from the Florida State Seminoles, who will be number 12, Lowry, the great quarterback, running back, Sam Restivo, and Alex Carriker. And Carriker can really knock you. It'll be something. So we tell you, the officials, the referee is William MacDonald, the umpire, Tom Rose, linesman, Earl Birdie, line judge, Bill Lang, Jimmy Klingenspit, field judge, Wayne Kearns, the back judge, clock operator, John Joyce, and the first Dan game. Martino. All right. I so got him 150 bucks for, for a speaking engagement. When he was, he couldn't get 50 anywhere else. Mm -hmm. So uh, the flip of the coin here is underway, and we'll see who wins it. One by the Panthers. <laughs> and out come the Panthers of Pitt. Tab, I'll double check it. Did you see? It? I think that the Panthers won the toss. We'll check it again here. And the way it looks is looks as if Panthers won the toss and will probably receive. We'll have to wait to get official word. The officials will make the announcement. Of course, as we said at the beginning of the game, a contrast of two football teams as we take a look at the officials. William McDonald is the referee. Tom Rose, the umpire. Earl Birdie is on the line. Klingen Smith, the field judge, the back judge is Wayne Kearns. Bill Lang. He's a line judge and John Joyce. He's the clock operator. So uh, you'll be watching that. And of course, you have that uh, length of time in which you can get a playoff. And now the Panthers are huddled here on the near sideline. And there could be possibly Froggy Morris, one of the shootouts of all time. And again, it could be just the other way around and stop them cold. Well, I'll tell you, Bob, I think the way I see it is it's going to be a question of who hangs on to the football today. Pitt's been turning it over the last couple of games. Florida State fires it from all directions. You're right. We're going to see some footballs today, Bob. All oh, right. Probably in the air. Yes, we'll see all of that. And coming out to boot the ball of a young man with the name of Barry Barco, B-A-R-C-O. He is a freshman and a walk-on at Florida State. And he'll be booting it off from the Seminole 40-yard line. As you can see, they're getting it ready to tee it up. And when we're ready to roll, we'll let you know who will be back deep to do the receiving. Right now, Billy Allen is one that's dropping back. Okay, Heath Kinsley will be on the far sideline. And Billy Callahan, will be a, who is a cornerback, will be near. Kinsley far, Callahan near. Up is the McIntyre, up on about the 15-yard line. Barco, ready to boot it away. Pins it on down deep into the end zone and takes it through there and it's all the way over. And that'll bring it out to the 20. So we'll see who they set here on the offense for the Panthers as we take a look at their lineup.
Pittsburgh offensively a show Jimmy Scales and McIntyre. Dwight Collins, Billy Wallace, and Clint Wilson as your flankers split in and tight end. And up front, Fralick, Durando, Sweeney, Dahl, and Brown. All right, from the 20, out of the eye formation, Jimmy. It's a man in motion to the near sideline. Dropping straight back, going to put it up right on the air. A little flanker pass out to the 15. They're going to lose some yardage. Completed out there, but knocked out of bounds was Mark Bailey out of King of Prussia. Coming up out of bounds and belted out of there by Rocky Kinsey. Who, by the way, while he's only 5'9 and 175, you take a look at the defense, can go a 4 4 40. Here's Corrector, Coach, and Ponder. With Williams, Rowe, Taylor, and McLean as the up back and outside linebackers. And the cornerback, Riley, Milligan, McCurry, and Kinsey. Second down, about 10 yards to go. Maybe a little more than that. Again, this time a great draw and gets it up to about the 20, 21 yard line. And McLean from the outside linebacker spot comes up and pops very quickly. I'll tell, you, they the were, I'll tell you, Bob, they were they were really jammed up in the middle on that pull. And Jimmy now brings him out of there. He'll bring uh, Billy Wallace to the near sideline. He'll send far to the left. Clint Wilson. And we're working now out of the pro set. And Jimmy on the call. No score early in the first period of play. Dropping back. Going to be rushed. Dumps it off. There's a little screen out there. It gets up to the 25 to the 30. Across the 30 to about the 34-yard line before Rocky Kinsey's able to bring down Mark Bailey. The youngster coming out of fullback and a little flare pass out of the backfield. That was a great call by the Pitt offense. As you can see on their first three plays, they're going to be mixing it up. Jemmy's going to drop straight back. The screen is developing to his left. He goes to Scales. Get the ball to your skill people, and that means Chucky Scales. He's up the field. All right, good. And Scales it was coming out of there rather than uh, Bailey going to the far side. Out of the eye, they go first down and 10. Uh, mix up there and no snap. And the markers are on the play, and it looks as though Pitt might have moved early. And it's certainly going to go against the Panthers. They'll drop it back as running into the ball game now is Mark Bailey. Offense, third down. I'll tell you, Bob, Pitt has got to guard against these kind of mistakes if they want to win this ball game. They've been guilty. They're a young team, but this is their fifth game, and they've got to, got to guard against these mistakes. Go, go, go. All right, they'll lock it back five yards. Put the ball back on the 29. First and 15. All right, Dwight Collins comes up the near sideline. They work it out of the eye. Billy Wallace is split. Balloon comes right down in the way. They give it off now to Scales running far to the sideline, trying to find a hole. Gets to about the 35, and he's knocked out of bounds. Far across the field over there by Brian McCrary coming up from his wide uh, weak safety spot and uh, Kim Mack also the linebacker working on the play. But Jimmy's going to take the handoff and drop straight back. This is a deep draw. It'll go to Scales and he's looking for room. Great blocking up front. Scales picks up some yardage on the play. Second down at about eight. The ball resting now on a 35 yard line. White Collins split to the near sideline. Wallace far out, out of a wing T left, really. And Jamie really a single back, and there's a uh, oh the, uh, coming up to the 40 to the 43 yard line is McIntyre, and roaring up that time is just a straight no nonsense type of play before Tracy actually comes up to grab him. We're watching a Florida defense that runs a 5-2 and everybody's going to get log jammed inside. Great blocking by the Pitt offensive line that had a great week in practice this week. And McIntyre turns it on and picks up close to the first down. We have McIntyre and Bailey flip-flopping in there so that you have, uh, and they're really coming in with a play. You recall against Maryland, they went on down the field that way and roared over Bill Fralick. And this time they go right at him with scales and they block him up fast on about the 44-yard line. And boy, as he smacked and smacked hard, the entire Florida Seminoles knew something about that play. I'll tell you what, Bob, they mm. certainly did. They all came there. Oh. Jimmy Brown wouldn't have run through that hole. And incidentally, uh, uh, to Jimmy, once again, another deep handoff to Scales, and he is met by the Florida State defensive line, and that defensive line is solid as far as experience. All five front men in that 5-2 defense 
are returners from last year. So they have some experience. However, as we said during the pregame show, they have not been able to come up with a big play defensively. That was a big play defensively. You know, Tab, I'll tell you, Scales first down. Man. Yeah, Scales' father used to block for Jimmy Brown, and I don't think Jimmy would have run through that hole, but uh, the kid got the first down anyway. One of the things you'll see is really a three-man front with Correcker, Fojic, and Ponder. Correcker, uh, by the way, is some number 76. Keep your eye on him. He's only six foot six, 260 pounds. And then they have a beefer up there, 6'5", 250, and uh, Brad Fojic, and 6'3", 250, Dave Ponder. Now they put the linebackers outside of them. Now Joe McCall is coming to the ball game. And a turn off to McCall. Turns it up, goes up to the 45, gets across the 45 to about the 46 or 7 yard line, where he's smacked down there by the outside linebacker Henry Taylor, a junior, six feet tall, 210 pounds. This is a mixed direction play, and Kajemi's going to fake to his left, and then you see Joe McCall turning it up the field. He's just tripped up. It looks as if he was trying to leap over the, the end man and didn't quite make it. No score in the ball game. The Panthers have had the ball for the opening kickoff. It moved from the 20 yard line to their own 47 yard line. Out of the eye, the up back in this case is Bailey. And dropping back to pass, and Jimmy throws it up. It is complete down in the Florida State Territory. As they fire it down there, and Riley comes up to make the stop on the play to the split end. Billy Wallace coming across and angled nicely to grab the territory. And Jimmy had enough time to throw it. Billy Bolitnikoff Wallace. Bolitnikoff is his idol, and he's a sure catch. No doubt about it. Jimmy looking to Wallace all the way in between two defenders. Good and, catch. And Bolitnikoff is the guy that went to school at Florida State. He drilled that one right in there, uh, fellas. I tell you what, he's looking sharp this afternoon so far. All right, give to the deep back out of the eye. Boom, as he gets popped when he gets down to the Florida State 44. Chuck Scales out of Shadyside Academy. And I often wonder how much of a doubt there was that he was going to attend any place but Pitt. Oh, I think he was coming here all the time, uh, Bob. He's dead. You can see the, the heat just rising up from the new carpet here at Pitt. This is a beautiful carpet. It almost looks like a natural turf field. They brought in another split end now, and Jeff Casper for the Panthers. They'll work it out of the eye. The up back in this case being Bailey. And Jimmy gives to Bailey. Looked like it was going to be an option play. Look at him barrel. There was a fine bit of faking that time. Finally, Mac Kim. Or Kim Mack, the senior, uh, six feet, 190 pound linebacker, was able to drag him down, but not before he moved those sticks. Great running there. And also great blocking by the offensive line. We're going to see it here. Blocked by Mike Dahl and Tony Brown, opening up some holes. And of course, Bailey turns it inside and gets good yardage out of the play. Pitts moving the football. They sure are. I'll tell you what, Tab. He, he could have broke it up there, but he ran into his own man, 53, the center. Who happens to be in that particular case, Jim Sweeney, but he's the guy that got it all started. Here's Conjemi now on a play action pass. Down he wants it all into the end zone. It's caught, but I think it's out of bounds. Caught flag, out of bounds down there the by ball. Billy Wallace, and there's also a marker on the play up on about the 14 yard line. Wallace made the grab out of bounds. Rocky Kinsey was there to guard just in case. Now remember about Rocky Kinsey, he can flat out fly a 4 4 40. We may either. Obviously, we're going to get pass interference or holding here, and it may go against the Panthers. It is. It looked as if Wallace pushed off on the play before he turned it outside. He pushed off on the defensive back, and they're going to knock him for 10 yards on this play. 15. Offensive pass interference. Blue. Lots of down. Second down. All right, now you have a loss of down. See if you can watch it. Here's Kajemi dropping straight back, play action pass, fakes as the handoff. He's going downfield. We're not going to be able to see it, but the push occurred inside of that play. All right, now it'll be a second down play coming up. From the eye, Kajemi a draw. Gives it off to his deep back. Hey, look at him run as he scampers down to about the 30-yard line before Mack is able to take him down. The linebacker off the left side. This Florida State defense has been giving up 35.5 points per game. And 406 yards per game. So they can be had 
I'll tell you, they uh, they show me some spots of uh, some spots of greatness, but they don't seem to be together. Scales has great vision. You can see him looking for holes on the replay. Finally, he's brought down from behind. All right, let's move now. Uh, Matt Stennett into the ball game and split him out wide to the left with a flanker inside him. And Jemmy on another drop play out from fast screen sets it up for Scales to the 30. Down to the 20-yard line almost. Well, call it the 21 before he's belted down hard almost to the sticks. We may be very close to a first down before Brian McCurry, the weak safety, comes up from Florida State to make the stop. I'll tell you, Bob, uh, Jim Sweeney, the center, threw a great block on that screen. He pushed off his man and got out there and knocked down their linebacker. Could Jemmy dropping straight back. Screen is set up perfectly. Every blocker has an eye on a Florida State defender, and one on one, they pick him up. Almost a tackle by number 13 on the play, and Pitt's going to have to kick a field goal here. And the kick is long enough. It is, however, wide left, and the Florida State Seminoles have held uh, there as the Panthers had a fourth down and nine to go and had to try to boot it up for three, couldn't get it. So the Seminoles will now take over and prepare yourself, ladies and gentlemen, for some razzmatazz action on the part of the Florida Staters. Because I guarantee you one thing, they fly. There's a break in the action. The score, Pitt nothing, Florida State nothing, will be Valley Lowry. And he takes in a play action, gives it off to his up back, Derek Jones, and Cedric Jones is belted hard by Chris Dolman. Dolman had an outstanding game, I felt, against West Virginia last week. Now take a look now. That's Kelly Lowry and Billy Allen and Cedric Jones, and these guys could flat out fly. Ouija, Thompson, Hudson, Jones, and Tom Wheeler. As you look at John Ionata, Ricky Render, Tom McCormick, Jamie Dukes, and Herbert Hart. They'll flip for the eye now. Kelly Lowry, the quarterback. You want to put it up. It's caught way out of the backfield coming up there is Jesse Hester. You, you watch him a lot. Look also and be ready as Weatherspoon, Ray Weatherspoon from Clariton, the senior, takes him out of there. There's Al Wenglikowski, Bob Biskowski, Bob Shilkin, Billy Moss, and Chris Dolman. And Cesar Alvesert with Troy uh, Benson. Ray Weatherspoon, Troy Hill, Melvin Dean, and Tommy Flynn. No score in the ball game. Dropping back, setting up the screen, complete down on the 20-yard line. Look at this guy fly. Holy Toledo, that's Greg Allen. This young man had a bad knee last year. Our last game didn't play, but one play in the game. He was the nation's leading rusher until that one play. They put him in, and of course, he didn't go anywhere. Saw a great block there. Bill Moss had it, had it diagnosed, and he was trailing the play. But we're going to see a great block by number 63, Ricky Render, who may be the best offensive lineman for Florida State right now. Watch this block on Moss. You're going to get a good look at it right here. Moss takes it on the shoulder pads, and he's gone. All right. Now they have, however, in this uh, first possession by Florida State, move the sticks for the first down as Pitt makes the change. In comes Shilton. Tell you what, Bob, they're going to go for it on fourth down. Yep, that they are. Fourth down, and they hand it off, and bingo, he dies for what should be the first down. Cedric Jones, the pullback. I don't think he pilot. made it. The Panthers are saying no. Let's see where they mark it. Cedric Jones straight ahead. But uh, Florida State, they said, let's huddle. We got it. Panthers are saying no. It depends where that headline's been moved in to mark that ball. And if he goes across the 30, it's a first down. Yeah, the officials are bringing in the sticks, Bob. Yep. They're not showing no, another they're, flag. They're throwing I... a marker. They, that'll hurt you. Well, whatever we said down on the field, I say we, the University of Pittsburgh, is going to draw the first down for sure now because you cannot say anything to an official in that capacity, and it'll be some sort of a personal foul, and it's going to move the sticks even more. That marker came out of that pit huddle. I got to believe somebody on the Panther ball club said something they should not have said. I don't think Pitt liked the spot at all, and to tell you the truth, I can see where the linesman is setting the ball down, and I don't like the spot either. They had to get to the 30-yard line, and if you uh, could see what we all saw, they didn't feel they did. Now the personal foul moves it up to the 47. We'll hear the call. Well, conveniently, the official's uh, microphone has gone, out of, gone south on us. 
But there's no question somebody said something while in that huddle and it's a 15 yard foul. So now it'll be first and 10 for Florida State. No score in the first period of play. The ball on the 46. Fake shovel. Give it off to Cedric Jones. And Jones on an inside handoff goes roaring across the 50 and down to the pit 46 or 7 yard line before he's met by Tom Quince out of New Jersey. Well, I'll tell you, Bob, with less. Lowry, who practiced a couple of years ago as a defensive end, believe it or not, hands off to the running back and some great blocking up front. This Florida State offensive line is, is a good one. All right, and they're awful big, too. So now they'll come to the near sideline with a guy that looks like he's in a jersey, fits him like socks on a rooster. Hester. Pitching back on the option. Now it's to uh, Allen. Look at him run up the near sideline, and he fights to stay in bounds. He's belted out of there by Melvin Dean, but not before he has a first down. Greg Allen, their Secretary of Transportation, their Secretary of the Interior is Tom McCormick, and they got the Secretary of State. He's Kelly Lowry. They got one more Secretary. He's Secretary of Defense Alfonso Correcker. Watch the pitch. It was a close one to the up back. It'll go outside to Allen, and Allen turns on the speed. You're looking at a guy that can run the 40 in. 428, which is amazing speed, maybe the best running back in the country. Number four, I'm telling you, he's a guy with a shirt that fits him like socks on a rooster. But he can fly. Now out of the eye, and the Panthers have got to have to dig in in the first period of play. Kellen Lowry looks, fires a lobber out of play, and I think he just threw that one away because Tommy Flynn and Hassan had Hassan Jones along with Melvin Dean sandwiched. Bob, how many secretaries do they have on this team? They got four, and they advertise the Secretary of Defense, Secretary of Transportation, Secretary of something else. And they do. They have a cabinet. They, they have an, very, an entire cabinet down there. They're very proud of it. And none of them wear skirts. Lowry, no. the quarterback we're looking at, Florida State, comes into the game. 14th in the quarterback rankings right behind Jeff Hostetler. Now, going out far to the right is that little Jesse Hester. But he with a flapping shirt. They give it to the up back, Greg Allen. Allen bangs across the 30. Tried to trap that time, and he stopped very cold. Getting up in there, Bob Shilkin and company, they said, let's go no farther along with Chrissy Dolman and Troy Benson. Hester has a 20.3 average reception, so watch him coming out of the backfield, too. They have four wide receivers that compare collegiately very favorably to the four wide receivers the Steelers had a couple of years ago. Stallworth, Swan, Smith, and Sweeney. That's how good they are. That's saying something. Coming up now, going far to the right is Hester. No score in the ball game. Kelly Lowry dropping back screen. Up over the middle, he's wide open, Hester. Down he goes to the five and roars and a smack down on about the three yard line, but he was wide open. Nobody near him. As Tommy Flynn finally makes the grab. It was either Hester or Jones that caught it. I caught a four in there. Whether it's a four or 41, we'll check it. They caught the Panthers in a blitz here. You see Wing Lukowski coming. Here's Callahan up to the near side. Lowry just lobs it right over the middle. Panthers burn on a blitz on that play. Now that's that number 41, Cedric Jones. I called him Hester. Should have known because he didn't have a flapping jersey. Yeah, well, I'll tell you, Chris Dolman made Lowry Ooh. pay after that play. But not before it went to goal to goal. All right, first and goal. The ball on the pit two yard line. Lowry out of the eye. Give it to the tailback. Drawing that is Allen trying to drive in. He gets maybe to the one yard line. The Panthers come storming in there to hold him to a one yard gain. You're looking at one of the nation's leading runner, runner in Greg Allen. He's called the Secretary of Transportation. Chris Dolman made the stop of that man who's known also as the Secretary of Transportation and has scored six touchdowns already this year. That was a great play by Chris Dolman, incidentally. Fought off a blocker and made the tackle and saved the touchdown on that play. Dolman had a pretty good game, I thought, against West Virginia last week. Second down and goal. The ball resting on about the yard and a half line. They're going to run out of the eye. Fake up and a touchdown as he just lobs it right over the center to the right. Tom Wheeler, their tight end. What they did to set the play up is they faked it to the up back beautifully to Jones, Cedric Jones. He barreled on through, and Lowry just straightened up, as you saw, and lobbed it for the touchdown. The tight end delayed at the line of scrimmage. We're going to see it here. We won't see the delay. We'll see the fake to the up back. And the tight end delays comes off the line. He only had to run two yards. All right, in to boot the ball now is Phillip Hall. Bangs it through, and the Florida State Seminoles. Does he bang it through or bang it wide? No. My angle here says no, thank you. Uh, 
Darrell Hess. This side looked like he split it right through there. So he's blown one, and that may be one of the important misses of the day. We'll be back. There's a timeout on the action. This my hand. And uh, Tinsley. Callahan near, Tinsley far. Last time he booted it right through. This is Parco. Short kick this time. We're going to have a run back. On the 5 -E, this is a two that goes through. Callahan is a muff will occur. The impetus of the kick puts the ball through. That'll be known as a muff, and the ball will come back out to the 20. Callahan couldn't see the ball. It went right into the sun. You can tell. Look at him wiping his eyes off. That ball went straight up into the sun, and you could you could tell. He had no idea where it was coming down. Just put his hands out and hoped it would have fallen in. I'll tell you, there was a, they had the they had the run back set up. Part of the crowd here, as you take a look, the sun over to our right, of course, and right smack dab into the eyes of those that are defending on the left side. Okay, let's see now. Can Jimmy trailing uh, nothing to six here in the first period of play? And keeping it this time on an option, fires it up, and it's caught. Inside the 30 up. Let's see where they're going to say. Did he catch it in or out of bounds? We'll have to wait. Looks as though they would call rule caught out of bounds. I if indeed he caught it was intended down there for Billy Wallace. I think Conjemi missed an open receiver and Clint Wilson who was in front of Bill Wallace on that play. Maybe we'll get a chance. Here Wilson is in the middle of your screen. The tight end running across. He's got his hand up in the air and he's wide open. That would have gained uh, about 10 yards if Conjemi would have hit the front man. I think he was just looking downfield. All right. Let's see Billy Wallace now to the near sideline. Dwight Collins blew out far out of the eye. Conjemi. Six nothing Florida State in the first period of play. Long count by Young and Jimmy Young. Gives it now to his deep back. He gets uh, about the 21 and 22 yard line and he stopped cold. I'll tell you, they are scrambling and there's no ands, ifs, or buts about it. This is some team that's ready to go. McIntyre off and now, uh, as Ashley made the stop there, they bring in uh, Mark Bailey at fullback. Ball is on the 21 yard line. Florida State leading 6 0 with three minutes to go in the first period of play. All right, bring uh, Bill Wallace to the near sideline. Collins will split far left. They'll work it out of the eye for the moment. And Jimmy dropping straight back. Fires it in the flat out there to uh, Bailey. Comes across to the 35, up to the 40. Fights to get across and is knocked down very close to being out of bounds on about the 41 yard line. Rocky Kinsey is the man that makes the stop on that play. Very fine grab. Collins had a great week of work all this week, and that catch shows that he's healthy. Conjemi looking to Collins all the way. Collins five yards away from a defender. Look at that. Now he'll turn it up, misdirection, comes upfield. He'll take a, a hit there. Still on his feet. Great balance. Dwight Collins. Oh, well, it'll be first down and 10. Florida State leading six to nothing in the first period of play. The ball on the pit 40 yard line. Conjemi. To the deep back and running hard for a yard or two scales and stopped by Ken Rowe, the linebacker on that side. He tried to run up that time over Freilich and Durundo. If you can get in behind those two guys with Sweeney, Durundo, and Freilich, you've got to move somewhere with 290, 252, and 250 working in front of you. It's like running behind a, a bulldozer, Bob. We're going to try to keep our eye on number 76 of Florida State, Alfonso Carricker, who's one of the best defensive li linemen in college right now. Now Matt Stennett is in the game has come to the near sideline. And Jimmy dropping straight back play action pass fires it for he wants it all. They got a man in the open Stennett. He can't get it. The ball drops on the 10 yard line overthrown by about five yards. Matt Stennett they went for the bundle that time. If that, shows, in beat too. if that shows one thing it shows that Conjemi has a great arm. It doesn't say much for timing between himself and the receivers but Conjemi has a great arm and if the Panthers need a big play like that they can always go to it. A minute and 38 seconds to go first quarter. I'll tell you Bobby he had uh, Wallace wide open on that play and again he again it's a youthful quarterback I think for the Panthers it's causing them their problems. See what happens now. All right, he's going to have a single back setting in there. 
On this third down play, uh, fakes the end around now, sets up the screen, it's caught up there by Walsh, but it's diagnosed beautifully by the cornerback coming up, big number 19, Pat Milligan, the strong safety, who was flying in there, and they knock him for a loop way back. The films aren't going to be uh, a pleasing sight to Dahl, the, the offensive lineman who's who was supposed to block the defender. You can't see Dahl on the screen. He's way out here. He comes in across your screen. But that play should have been uh, handled by Dahl out front. All right, Reggie is going to punt to a single return man, C.D. Jones, standing back on the 25. Rich has been averaging about 42 yards a punt. Bangs one high into the air. Good hang time. Fair catch is called for up on the 27 or 28-yard line. C.D. Jones. And again, the Seminoles of Florida State will be coming at you with... There's a reason Florida State was ranked in the top 10 in the country before the season. We ought to bring that up. Yep. How are things going? All right. I know I stepped on you once there, Paul. I'm sorry. Get a little water, Gunner. Oh, I could I could use some of that. Uh... It'd be nice to get a turnover here. Thank you, Tommy Rod. Florida State six, Pittsburgh nothing. Amazing, amazing. Go get him, Gunner. <laughs> I'll tell you what's tough to see that pitch scoreboard. All right. All right, the Seminoles of Florida State leading six to nothing have the ball for their second possession. Uh, 57 seconds left in the first period of play. The ball resting first and 10 on their own 27 yard line. Kelly Lowry out of the eye. Play action pass. Wants a long one himself. He's got that little Hester down there fighting for it. And a darn good bit of battling by Melvin Dean who was trying to pick it off. And Kelly laid it right where the Dickens, that young man Hester was supposed to be. He of the flapping shirt. I'll tell you, I think uh, Melvin almost took off into orbit on that stop. I mean, he was way up there to knock that one down, Bob. Yes, he was. Now, Hester's a uh, junior, six feet, 175 pounds. That can run, uh, he only has an average reception of 20.3 yards per catch. Second down, 10. Big pass, give it off to the deep man, Jones. Jones comes up a little yardage that time, quickly diagnosed by Melvin Dean from the right corner from the Panthers. Melvin Dean out of Cordell, Georgia, along with Mount Lebanon's Bob Shilkin. So that's two great plays by Melvin Dean in a row right there. When everybody talks about the Pitt Panther defense, they think about how good it is against the rush. Well, the secondary of the Pitt Panthers is probably the most underrated in the country. They come into today's game, incidentally, Ninth against the pass. Saw a flash there a moment ago of some of the folks in the pit band, one of the great bands in the country. They'll match this band with anyone you'll name anywhere around. All right, now he's working a pro set. Third down, dropping back. And he flat pass right out to little Hester, who gets out there, rather Cedric Jones. Gee, they got those fours and 41 and 34 and another marker on the play as it came up and knocked him down on about the 35 yard line. And it was Cesar Aldisic from Mount Lebanon that made a the stop. A case of the missed big play. It would have been seven points for Pitt on that play if Al Wing Lukowski, who had his back turned to the quarterback, Kevin Lowry, was facing the quarterback. He would have picked that pass off and gone into the end zone easily. But unfortunately, Al had his, had his back to the quarterback, didn't see the pass coming. Florida State picks up big yardage. Well, they're looking around. The marker is down here. Let's see what they're going to call here now. Here you're going to get an opportunity to see what I mean on this. Wing Lukowski is coming in from the left end. He's got his back to Lowry. And you see the play. Wing Lukowski going after the, the running back out in the flat and not seeing the ball come out of the hands of the, of the uh, quarterback, Lowry. I'll tell you, Tad, they called personal foul against Pitt. Dead ball foul. Personal foul. Defense. First down. Well, that's the second 15-yard chunk. Yeah, you can't a, give this club that kind of yardage. That's 50 yards and penalties, Bob, so far for the Panthers. Now they've moved it to across the 50-yard line. End of the quarter. And that's the end of the first quarter, my friends. Uh, so when we come back out, we'll see Florida State in possession of the ball. The end of the Six to nothing. The second quarter just underway. There seems to be some hard feelings down on the field. Maybe it's just good to terminate this series for a while as we see that fullback Jones on a delay. 
track for good yardage on a first down across the 35 and down a very close to the 33 yard line. Cesar Aldisert, this, this great linebacker, makes the stop. You're going to see a block right here by Greg Allen on the run to Jones. And Allen is a great athlete. Not only does he have speed, not only can he run the football and catch it, but he can block. Okay, it'll be first down 10. Now they got a flanker split and uh, pitching it back now to that deep man, Greg Allen, their secretary of transportation. And the Panthers string him out that time and don't let him get much yardage forward. The irresistible force, namely the Seminoles' offense against the immovable object, the pit defense. That's what we're seeing developing on the field right now. And of course, Florida State is up six to nothing. And this is going to develop into an interesting game, if not a high scoring one. We'll take, a, that. take a look at the stats. Florida State, 28 yards rushing, 46 passing. Pitt, balanced offense. Now, Cletus Jones, the fullback, has uh, gone off the field, and this is a play action coming to the near sideline. Lowry fires it upfield. He's got a man open, and he catches it in or out of bounds. They say inbounds. Luigi Thompson. They say inbounds. The Panthers are arguing no. And not getting any call at all, as Troy Hill was saying, there's no way that was inbounds. We should be able to see whether he's inbounds or out of bounds, but the Panther coverage on this play was good. I think Lowry wanted to go to uh, a receiver who was closer to him, and we're going to see the ball coming in. Receiver gets good. his one foot in. It's a good call. First down and 10. Seminoles now with a pro set. Now they want a new call from Sam Restivo, who's their center. Out of the eye. Keeping on the option and pitching it back to Greg Allen. Hit deep back there on the 20-yard line. Spun him around. He fights hard for a couple of more yards forward, but he was hit back on the 20. The initial pop on him is what stopped him from going for good yardage. I'll tell you, Bobby was hit first by uh, number 96, and uh, he fell down, missed the tackle, mm -hmm. got up and made the tackle. Yes, sir. Quite a defensive play. And Weatherspoon coming in there to help it as we see the replay. Ray Weatherspoon, who was in on the tackle, he's getting his first start today. He forces him, has a hand on him, and forces him back inside. Now Weatherspoon's going to get up and come in and make the tackle that he missed the first time around. That's good pursuit. Second down, 10. A little bobble back there. Lee rolling left and going to keep it. And it'll be stormed down. Uh, I, think, I think on the handoff there from the center, he bobbled. It didn't get possession of what he wanted, and Bill Sapio was able to uh, Sapio was able to take him out from New Jersey. That was just great pursuit on Sapio's part. He's, you're going to see him at the line of scrimmage and then he'll cut back and he runs almost as well as Lowry and you can see that right here. Lowry had practiced as I said as a defensive end a couple of years ago in the Seminoles camp is pretty fast but Sapio stayed right with him. Good play. I'll All tell right. you what that looked almost like Hostetler's play last week in the uh, West Virginia game. Third down and a little more than 10. Big play for the Panthers and for the Seminoles. He's going for six. He got a man open. Got him for a touchdown, too. Ouija Thompson. This guy can flat out go run and get him. He's six foot six, 220 pounds. He's a flanker back, and he averages over 20 yards per catch. 21 yards a catch. You're gonna You're going to see him run a flag. The receiver cuts inside, fakes the post, and goes outside. And he has the, the Panther secondary totally fooled, I think. He had Troy Hill turned around that time, Tab. I think they thought it was going to be a post. This time the boot is up. And they say that it flips through there and is good. So now, ladies and gentlemen, it's another type of ball game. As Phil Hall knocks it through. And there's timeout in the action. Florida State 13. him up when he ran the flag. I'd like to see that again. Less than 10 back. Hmm. 
Callahan. All right, we have Callahan, who's a deep man on the far side. There's now booting the ball off to see if they can kick it through the end zone the other way. That's a Barry Barco. High end over end, as you see, is going to be taken on about the three yard line by Callahan. To the 10 to 15, got a wedge, got a hole, hops across the 20 and up to about the 25. Good return by Callahan, who normally plays the strong safety. Well, Callahan was moved from running back to safety, so you know he can run the football. All right, there you see the number of plays eight, 80 yards, two minutes and 17 seconds. Larry to Thompson, Ouija for the touchdown. Point after 13 nothing. You know, Bob, that's pretty remarkable. They got off eight plays in two minutes and 17 seconds. That means they're throwing the football. That they are doing, and they are moving it up and down at will. And the Panthers are going to have to figure out a way. This is the first time the Panthers defense has been shredded this early in the game, both running and passing. No question about it. Okay, now the Panthers are going to send Bill Wallace. Youngster out of New Jersey to the far sideline, and Jimmy out of the eye. To the deep back, and he runs for good yardage as he comes across before Ken Rowe is able to stop Joe McCall. Joe McCall getting some running time. Ken Rowe, the linebacker at six feet, 205 pounds, senior. Now we have the flip-flopping of the fullbacks. It's uh, McIntyre and or Bailey as they go back and forth. Here we see an injured Pitt Panther on the sideline. We saw the running play go right over Bill Freilich. It's going to be interesting, Bob, if we see him go over Freilich mm -hmm. again. That was uh, Rich, a linebacker. They were checking on his ankle. Or rather, Tom Johnson. All right, they have Jimmy trapped. If he runs, he gets some yardage. He's up to the 30 and then piled right there and belted hard by Ken Rowe. Jimmy, everybody they had out there for a receiver was flat out covered. And Jimmy wisely kept the ball and ran it for some yardage. I'll tell you, Bob, they had him handcuffed. I'm looking at that number 93 down there they're working on, and it seems to me his name is Rich. And he's a linebacker, and uh, one of the few he's calls that he's had. All right, now we have a third down for the Panthers, and the big players, they can get it off. That was the 20 from Jimmy. Over the middle, man wide open, almost an official in the way. It is McCall. McCall has the first down, and then some. And one of the up officials before Kim Mack makes the stop was right smack in the way, or he might have gone for a lot more yardage. It looked like Jackie Sherrill's 12th man on the field yeah. that time, Bob. Well, Here's the replay. It certainly helps. McCall's going to delay in the backfield, then cut across over the middle. Not only does Kajemi have McCall open over the middle, as we see the catch, he also has Bailey open in the flat. So he could have gone either way. Good call, good play. Well, now it's first down for the Panthers, and a timeout is being called down on the field of play. Well, the injured player seems yep. to be all right, Bob. He's up walking around. Well, if it's an injury timeout, that man has to leave the field. Or it'll be charged to him. Instead, we'll see that they are. The officials are standing over the ball, and I think it's while they're waiting to reposition the yard mark. Well, that's right. And as soon as that plays down, we'll start, and that's exactly what it is. So, Kajemi now, let's see who he has in his backfield. He sends Billy Wallace far to the right, brings a Dwight Collins to the near sideline, works out of the eye. Good blocking up front as he fires to the man up on the 48-yard line coming across from the field, Dwight Collins, who was beautifully covered by Steve Bloodworth. Dwight Collins out of Beaver Falls, comes across and makes a new catch for another check of the first down. There are very few receivers that run better patterns than Dwight Collins. The ball is thrown to a spot. Collins is there. He makes the catch. Plain, simple. Yeah, All great right. drill that Kajemi really looked good on that play. He drilled the ball right in there. There was good coverage by the by the defensive back. And like you said, Tab, it's the pattern and the throw. All right, now with the second down and short yardage, let's see whether Kajemi wants a lot of it or is content to just try to move the sticks. He's going to go for a bundle. Fires the deep one way down the field. Got a man into there. It's intercepted and dropped, I should say. Almost intercepted. Right down on the pit 10-yard line intended down there for McCall. Joe McCall had his man beaten. Once again, we hmm. see the great arm of John Kajemi, but the timing not there, and Collins was covered man for man. Eric Riley covering him. 
there's number 93 going into the locker room. Dr. Nixon looked them over and sent them, sent them back into the locker room. That is Mark Rich, a junior linebacker from Smithfield, Pennsylvania. I think he's going to be all right, Bob. Yeah, certainly hope so. Now we go for the yardage, and big yardage as McCall rolls across the 50, down across the 45, and into the 43-yard line before they finally stop him. It's Mark Kim Mack, and he's getting a lot of calls out as a linebacker. I tell you, I haven't seen Joe McCall run this way since spring practice. Watch him turn it on right here. He's gone upfield, and he can take a hit. McCall is probably running today the best he's run since uh, the season opened. Well, he's trying to run over that linebacker. All right, now they bring in uh, Brian McCurry as a weak safety. See if they can plug up the gap there as Jimmy. Dropping on first down. Now is caught. Get that ball down there. He does, and he's stormed under a big number 45 coming in there, and that name is Isaac McWilliams, a sophomore, 6'1", 250 pounds, while they allow Alfonso Kelliker to have a little rest. You know, Florida State's defense uh, hasn't come up with a big play in there really all season, but they do here. They get some pressure, and Bobby Bowden, uh, as character we see forces Kajemi inside and his backup making the play. He's going to use some new people in there that kind of spice things up. Matt Stennett split wide to the right. Out of the eye, Kajemi. It's time for the deep man McCall, and McCall fights for yardage, but is ridden down by Ken Rowe. These guys uh, from Florida State smell that ball pretty quick. I'll tell you what, Bob, uh, Coach Bowden's no stranger here to Pitt Stadium. The first time he showed up here was, was the famous 36-35 Pitt victory back in 1971 uh, against when he was with West Virginia. So he's had the lead here before, and the Panthers have come back. It remains to be seen what's going to happen here today. And it's 13 to nothing with a Pitt fan there. Not too happy just for the moment, as it'll be a uh, third down play for the Panthers, and they've got some yardage to make up, about 13. Kinjemi running to the right, now fires a sidearm pass and out of bounds, and it was intended up there, I guess. It looked like a broken play to me. Eric Riley was riding way out there. I think he just dumped that off. His receivers were all covered, Bob. Boy, they really did. I thought it was Matt Stennett for whom they intended that pass, but he just wilded it way out. All right, we're going to see now single man come in for the return he's going to drop back and that is uh, C.D. Jones they got about three Joneses on this floor of the club Reggie standing on his own 38 good beautiful hang time spends a magnificent front up field and bounces just for a Nats eyelash into the end zone Just barely got in there. Now there's a marker on the play, but I don't think it's anything other than the official wanted to mark that the ball went in and was batted back out. The punt was 47 yards. Illegal batting on the kicking See? team. That's Touchback. You cannot. Down. It doesn't do any more than just bring the ball back to the 20-yard line for the uh, safety no return. Florida. Let's see what they go from there. Florida State only had 10 men on the field at that time and they still managed to come away with good field position at the 20. All right first out at 10 the ball is on their own 20 they lead 13 to nothing in the first period the second period of play and a fake pitch out to his wing back coming around and a give to the up back Jones he goes nowhere. Maybe we can get a good shot at Kelly Lowry the quarterback of Florida State you talk about a tough kid he's 6'1 225. He decked a linebacker with a forearm one time after he was intercepted. He was so angry about it. And as we said, he did practice at defensive end a couple of years ago. And he had a motorcycle accident in which his boots were knocked off, but he, he was fine. He lost his boots. Let's not talk about motorcycle accidents. That is Greg Allen, the Secretary of Transportation, looking around for some room to run. <laughs> and he couldn't find it anywhere because he was racked up. I'll tell you one thing. You know what you're not hearing today? You're not hearing a doggone thing about co-captain Tom Flynn. You know why? They're not going anywhere near him. That's how much respect Bobby Bowden has for him. They're not, they're not giving him any chance at all to do anything. They don't throw anywhere near him. Well, you're looking at Pitt's be best athlete when you talk about Tommy Flynn. No ifs, ands, or buts. All right, now... Kelly Lowry, six feet one, 225 pounds, in his fifth year. Redshirt in one year. 
Dropping back to pass over the middle. He goes. Oh, it's almost intercepted. Big number. Tom Wheeler was the man for whom it was intended. Caesar Aldiser had his hands on it. But you know, a linebacker so wrapped up, it's hard to hold on to. I'll that. tell you what, Bob. That that the pit defense is starting to get psyched up. You can hear the crowd come to life. Maybe there's hope for him in this game. Well, they're beginning to root and roar. Now they're going to have to go back and punt, and Tommy Flynn is back inside his own 40 single safety. Let's see how this young man does on the punts. Looks like they're setting up a return, Bob. Yeah, that's Lou Berry. Not a very good punt. Got a lot of hang time, but no distance to it. Flynn is not going to fair catch it. Dances around, gets up to the 40-yard line. And this is very good field position for the Panthers. And a marker's down on about the 42-yard line, 47-yard uh, line. We'll see what that's all about. The punt was 42 yards long. That had an incredible hang time on it. I, It was close to six seconds. I, I swear mm -hmm. it went up over the stadium, and I think up over the hospital we're looking at right across the They're going to call a clip against Pitt. That punt looked like a uh, pop fly to the center fielder, uh, Bob. It was mm -hmm. One of those cans of corn you're famous for. Yeah, big gold, two old ten pounds of golden bantam. A golden bantam. Huh? Yeah, golden bantam. Matty Alou is back. <laughs> all right, now they're going to mark it back, and so that good field position I was talking about just evaporated all the way back to the 25. Let's get the clip. Clipping. Returning team on the run. First down. As you know, they do not. They do not uh, identify in collegiate uh, football who's guilty of the infraction. So, and Jemmy from the first and ten on the 25, 13 to nothing for the state. And it looked to me like uh, that young man running hard, trying to get himself some running room. Was little Chucky Scales and Ken Rowe made the stop. This Florida State defense is fired up. They haven't played well all season. That was supposed to be their strong suit. Florida State was picked by many to finish in the top 10. Look at all those penalties. Five for 60, none for Florida State. That's a big factor in the ball game. A very big factor in the ball game. A fumble. Florida State's ball. Now it's out of that pile. Now Pitt's whether got who's it. got it this time. Let's take a look. That baby was going to make the move. That thing's all over the place, and the Panthers find a big number 73 came rolling up out of there. Ken Rowe had it for one time. It looks like Greg Christie from Freeport is the gentleman that recovered the ball for Penn. I'll tell you what, Bob, they had the bug on the rug. <laughs> yeah. Heads up play by Greg Christie, who's playing left guard. You'll see him blocked down on the nose tackle. Watch this hit. Unbelievable right there, a helmet. Knocks the ball out of Chucky Scales' hands. The ball's going to bounce around. About 18 million guys are going to touch it. And then you're going to see Christie, after blocking on the nose tackle, come over and pick it up. Ken Rose, the man that originally knocked the ball loose, and then the state couldn't hold it. Now a turnaround misdirection play, and I don't know how the Dickens it went that way. It, they all, everybody came back to tackle Conjemi, and there was one of the real great misdirection plays you'll take a look at. That still wasn't enough, Bob. They got nope. Ratchy in to punt. Yep, came close to it. So now they'll send their single uh, receiver back. That is C.D. Jones. Ratchy is punt. Drives it back. He runs away from the ball because of the sun. Going to take a pit bounce. He's going to go down and drop dead on about the seven-yard line. There is a very beautiful punt. And one thing C.D. Jones did, he realized looking up in that sun, get out of there. Florida State 13, pit nothing. We'll Reggie, right. that'll bring up his average even more. He was running around 42. Now Kevin Lowry fakes on a give and passes it out to his wingback coming out. Was he out of bounds? That was Cedric Jones. We'll see whether he was out of bounds when he caught the ball. They are marking it as though it was not. And they're going to put it on about the 11. And the Panthers are having some trouble. We want to remind you the announcers on this cable cast are contracted and paid for by Total Communication Systems. Any reproduction, rebroadcast, or other use of the accounts of this game without the express written consent of the Total Communication Systems is prohibited. To the up back, and look at him come back. Oh, he just found a hole a mile. Greg Allen. He faked beautifully to the fullback, Cedric Jones. Gave it off to the Secretary of Transportation, Greg Allen. And here comes Tom Flynn for the only call of the day on defense. What a hole the offensive line opens up for this young man, Allen. 
Tom McCormick is the center, just drives the nose tackle out of the way. Jamie Dukes, who may be the best offensive lineman, number 64, to enroll at Florida State, takes the guy the other way, and you've got a hole you can drive Froggy through. And of course, they all, went, run through that yeah, one, they all went through and after Cedric Jones, you know, and the delay there, they handed it off to Allen. Now Lowry on the option, and he fakes uh, the hole, and he fakes off so to Allen, and he keeps to Jones, and Jones is finally stopped by Melvin Dean. Let's see where they'll mark the ball, the 27-yard line. And Chris Dolman out of York, Pennsylvania, getting involved, too. As we see, the score here with 4.15 to go in the first half, 13 to nothing, Florida State. Florida State's skill people are awesome. Bobby Bowden said this week, we have some pretty good skill people. I think it was being uh, a little short on the end of, uh, of that. Second down and nine, Jesse Hester comes to the near sideline. It's back. There's the end around fake. It's, uh, they give it to Hester. Hester running wide. He can pass, you know. He's going to be driven down for a loss way back on around the 20-yard line. And they fooled nobody that time on that. Looked like the end around, but instead, the Caesar Aldo starts didn't go away. Along with Wenglikowski, they just stayed there and swarmed Mr. Hester. Al Wenglikowski doesn't make the tackle, but he makes the play. Here's Hester running, but Wenglikowski's standing right there, and he forces him in. Aldersert comes in and picks up Hester. Al Wenglikowski made that play. You know, that's really good defense because he, he, he just stayed where he's supposed to be. He's supposed to contain on that sideline, and he was there the whole time. Stayed at home is exactly what he did. Third down and about 15 to go. Now, obviously, passing situation. Kelly Lowry dropping back. Little screen pass to the far sideline. Throws it out of bounds. Everybody was covered. He just flipped it out there, and he's going to bring that punter in. Wenglikowski was driving him crazy. We're uh, indebted to Daryl Hess and to George Kirk helping us on our spotting here. George Kirk, by the way, is now going to be the young man in charge of uh, directing of ticket sales for the Pittsburgh Mollers. So we wish George lots of good success there. Let's mention, too, that we have the great John Duffy with us. in the That we always do. Today. Lewis Berry is coming in now to punt. Lewis Berry. Oh, a one-step punter almost is blocked. You see who the Dickens almost blocked it. The ball picked up now by Flynn. He's trying to get a wall of tacklers up in front of him, and he squirms up to about the 45-yard line, and a bit of good upfield blocking by the Panthers. Bill Sapio. Hunt went uh, 29 yards. Timeout of the action. The score, Florida State 13. All right. Now, Kinjemi. Dropping back and firing. Man is wide open and drops it. And he's very upset. Dwight Collins hit him right on the numbers. Got to remember, though, and I'm not trying to make an excuse for the young man, he is looking right into the sun. Anytime you turn around, it right smack into your eyes. 2.48 to go in the half. First half, 13 to nothing, Florida State. That could have been a big factor, as you know, Bob. The, the sun, he's looking right into it, but you can't help but feel if he makes the catch. He goes another 20 yards in the big play the pit offense needs. Second down 10, the ball on the pit 45-yard line. They'll run it out of the eye. Dwight Collins split to the near sideline. And Jimmy falls down. Coming out of there, looked like he tripped over the heel of his center and just didn't have any chance to do a thing. Jim Sweeney stepping on John Kajemi's feet there, and that'll sometimes happen. What you call a bad play. Now, a wasted play. Now we have Mark Bailey coming in. Well, it's obviously Florida State's to advantage because now they know as they go with their nickel backfield that the Panthers have to put the ball in the air or they at least feel that that's a pretty good play. All right, Bill Wallace goes to the far sideline. Bring uh, Matt Stennett to the near sideline. Running Kajemi and now cross is caught up there by Dwight Collins goes across the far sideline and finally fights his way out of bounds and I don't see any markers on the play and the ball will be on the 31. I'll tell you what Jimmy paid the price that time he unloaded the football and was flattened. If there's a weakness on this Florida State team, it's in their secondary. Can Jimmy knows that he rolls left finds Collins in between two defenders. Good for a first down. Great call. Great play. We're going to see it from a different angle. Kajemi coming across. As you can see, Colin splits the defense. Good catch. We're under two minutes, Bob. All right. Now, there's a thing, too. Florida State trying to keep him in bounds to keep the clock rolling. 
And Jemmy on his own 40 across the middle. He goes to McCall. McCall fights his way across the 30 down to the 27-yard line before Rocky Kinsey knocks him down. 13 to nothing, Florida State. Pitt trying to get a score before that clock runs down. The Panthers, all their timeouts, looks like they're going to spend one right now. Pitt Panthers. needs some points. They need some points on this drive. They have to come away, I feel, with a touchdown to get with, to within six. And this offense is moving the football. I think the secondary of Florida State is vulnerable. It's a matter of uh, the front wall up front being all right. Tell you, Bob, take a look at this. Take a look at this. The entire Florida State defense is on the sideline. Well, I think that the guy over there is Mr. Bowden giving him a little prayer meeting. He's known as the Reverend Parson Bobby Bowden down in Florida. Well, I'll tell you, they have, it looks like they're having a cabinet meeting on the sideline, Bob. They got all their secretaries over there, and the coach is uh, trying to instill a little steel into them. I'll tell you what, it's a long time out. Oh, here comes Florida State back onto the field. Here they come. They're coming out now. They all went over and had the cabinet meeting. They're back. Well, back by popular demand. The Florida State warm defense. It, look how warm it is down there. As you look at Bill Fralick, and that's just a small tad of a man, six foot five, 290 pounds, and he's very kind to his mother and his father. He stays out of their refrigerator. Well, his mother is a lovely lady, Dorothy. I've known her a long, long time, and his uncle, of course, was one of the great football players, Halibut. Is that right? Steelers. Yes, sir. I never knew that. Bob. Yes, sir. His uh, Halibut's only weighed about 190. And imagine that his nephew is 100 pounds bigger than he. Ooh. Oh, brother. All right, this is Pitt's best scoring chance. With a minute 30 to go, Kajemi, as you see, rolling right. He's got his man, McCall, and McCall drives across the 10 and out of bounds. And that's a good thing. One thing, they're completing it. And two, before Riley knocks him out, they're getting where they stop the clock. Great call by the Panther offense. As you can see, they're moving the football by going to the backs. All week, Foz Fazio talked about getting the ball into the hands of the skilled people. You're going to see McCall break over the center and then across the field, rolling with Kajimi. Wide open. Now, I'll tell you one thing. They don't need 10 yards. It's first and goal. The ball is across the 10 by a Nats eyelash. And Jimmy to the near sideline. Pete coming, son. He's got a wall of blockers. Turns it up and gets down to about the six. Everybody on that left side coming up along with John McLean, the outside linebacker, and Henry Taylor making the stop. A pit takes their second time out. Can Jimmy come into the sidelines? This time, instead of the Florida, oh, here goes the Florida State defense back onto the bench. The whole team goes over there for another cabinet meeting. Coaches are calling them over, Bob. You see yeah. that? Yeah, well, it's one of the few clubs that does that, but I've seen Florida State do it quite a few times. Also, Florida, Charlie Pell's club down there. Uh, we've had the pleasure many times of speaking to the various touchdown clubs at Tallahassee and at all the different places where they play this great game of football. Down in Miami, of course, where there is, by the way, is a great football club waiting to play. Well, the Mountaineers of West Virginia. The Mountaineers as well as Florida State. You know, you take a look at Florida State's football schedule, Tab Douglas, you're looking at a tough schedule. Well, they've already played a couple of great teams, and last week they played Auburn, who was ranked in the top five in the country and moved up to, I guess it's third this week in a couple of polls. They played their best game of the year, ironically, last week against Auburn in a three-point loss. This football team is, is, a, is a good football team, and I think you'll see them in the top 20 before this season is over, no doubt. Well, they're going to have to play a couple of other ball clubs, Cincinnati, Louisville, nothing but how about Arizona State, South Carolina, Miami, and then Florida. Miami's going to be the tough one, Miami. You have nothing wrong with the Hurricanes. Well, now, I call it first and goal, ladies and gentlemen, uh, in this situation. When I saw this spot, they don't have to, uh, they just have to make a touchdown. They get the 10 yards. Now, we're going to send the call far to the right. Matt Stennett, I should say, far right. Give it off instead to the middleman. Touchdown, Bailey. Oh, did he find a hole in a trap off Bill Fralick rear end, and in he blew for TD and six. Well, that's a that's a big play for the Panthers. They needed to get on the board. The play's going to go right up the middle. We saw the great trap block by Greg Christie, I think it is. Another angle. Mike Durundo was the guy who made the block, the trap. 
Yeah, that's the center, uh, Jim, Jim Sweeney. Sweeney, helping out on that play as well. That's what they call getting into the land of milk and honey. Now, here's Hater. the young man that hasn't missed a touchdown pop for a long time, and he doesn't miss it either. He nails it right on through, and that is a very, very big, big touchdown point. Remember, Florida State missed one, so the out of score is 13. Florida State's got the weapons to score very, very quickly. 55 yards they drove it as we take a look at the deep man now, Billy Allen, and watch him because he can really fly. A little waffle kick, and he's going to bring it out on the 5 to the 10 and racked up on about the 15-yard line. I don't think he wanted to come out of there right away, but he had no choice. Once he committed himself, he had to keep trying. Well, I'll tell you what, Bob, he wasn't sure whether he caught the ball in the end zone or on the one-yard line, so I guess he figured he had no choice, and he ran it out to the 15. Good wow. tackle on the play by uh, number 23, John Cato of the Pitt Panthers. All right, number to play, 7, 55 yards at a minute and 45 drive with Bailey. Six yard run that was just great play selection beautiful. on that yep. drive, Bob. A minute and eight to go in the second quarter play. Florida State leading 13 to 7. That touchdown was what Pitt had to have to get back into the ball game. Kelly Lowry now gives it off to the Secretary of Transportation, Greg Allen. And Greg Allen, who is a junior, uh, six feet tall, 200 pounds, Caesar Alvesert makes the stop. They say about Greg Allen that without that little knee strain he had last week, that he was at that time the nation's leading rusher. He is without a doubt one of the great runners in the country today. Greg Allen. Well he still is ranked number one in the country. I think he's averaging 157 odd yards per uh, per game. And uh, last year incidentally he led in scoring with 21 touchdowns. All right Lowry uh, the fake gives it off instead to number 41 Cedric Jones and Jones picks his way through some pit bodies that gets up for a first down as he goes across the 25 up very close to the 30 yard line or he's finally brought down in there by Bob Shilkin who had a trail on the play and come back Pitt sends in now along with Melvin Dean another back for that uh, Denny I tell you as a middle guard and they'll bring out uh, Bob Shilkin to give him a little rest. We're going to get another look at it. Lowry's going to hand off right up the middle. Great blocking by the offensive line. Looked almost like a hold there somewhere along the line. And of course, Jones just turns it on. Well, that Herb Harp, that strong tackle, is a guy that opened the hole for him there. You know, Bob, I'll tell you, there's something a little strange here. Florida State didn't use a timeout on its uh, on its last play. They let the clock run. Now they've expended a timeout. Uh, both both plays on this drive have been uh, on the ground. I wonder whether uh, Bobby Biden might have some up his sleeve for this next play. Well, you could be looking at Hassan Jones, who could pass the ball. You can look at Ouija Thompson coming out of the flanker spot and going down. You could look at all sorts of things, including that beautiful young lady right there on the sideline, which I think I'd rather watch right now than Ouija Jones going in for six. Yeah, I'd rather watch but, that myself, Bob. But here comes the guy with a flapping shirt, Jesse Hester. <laughs> He's to the near sideline. We got somebody flat out on him. He bumps him once, and now there's the front. They're coming for Hester, and he catches it. Did he catch it in bounds? He did, and then he takes it out of bounds to stop the clock up on the fly. Look at Jesse Hester in that shirt. He's all shirt, isn't he? He can go. He certainly is, and we're going to see a man get beat on this, and I think he's the same guy that got beat on Ouija Thompson's touchdown. Number 29. He's a, he's a young man, Smith. Smith. Strong safety. Who's in there. As a matter of fact, this is the first time I've seen him all year. Well, his name is uh, Reggie Smith. He's a freshman, 6'2", 195 pounds from Bayonne, New Jersey. So he, that's how you learn in the big leagues right here, and uh, he's not in there now. Well, he's got to get a little support from the uh, from the corner man on that. I think he was playing safety at the time. And Time out, Florida State. They want to go over a thing here. Kellen Lowry wants to go over there. On the scoreboard shows 14 seconds to go, 13 to 7 score. What I want to know is how come the entire defense goes off to talk to Bowden and only Lowry goes over? There's a offense. real answer for that. He only wants to hear one man, and that's Lowry. The defense, he wants to tell every one of them, get, shake your tails and get going. <laughs> is Lowry one of the secretaries, Bob? He is a secretary of state. Oh, he's the boss. He's the secretary of state. Now, the secretary of transportation is Greg Allen. The secretary of the interior is Tom McCormick, the center. And the secretary of defense is Alfonso Correcker. 
I'm glad you. I'm glad we got he that all straight now. He's only six six, two hundred and sixty pounds, and a senior from Columbus, Ohio. You know, a funny story about the great running back from Florida State, Greg Allen. He's a real shy individual, and he doesn't like to talk about all the things he's accomplished, including as a freshman uh, setting a record with 322 yards against, uh, I think it was Western Carolina. Somebody said that he's so quiet, even his pet parakeet, Petey, doesn't talk. I'd say that's quiet. That is quiet. Who is number nine for the Panthers? Gone in there. And Ray Weatherspoon. Look at Ray Weatherspoon. Ray Weatherspoon. Right. Flo Spazio is up to his ears and all kinds of cable wires, but he's all right. Now they're going to send that kid Jesse Hester of the flapping shirt far left. You better put some glue on him because he can do it. Now he comes out. He's going to run the option, pitches it back to Secretary of Transportation. He gets flattened by the Secretary of the Interior Cabinet, Troy Hill. <laughs> How many secretaries we got out there? We got secretaries everywhere. I'll tell you what, Bob, there, there's another great defensive play by Pitt that the, the man had to contain on that play, and he stayed where he was supposed to be and didn't go for the fake. There's the replay. It's the option all the way. Lowry is going to roll with it, and if he sees a guy open downfield, he'll go that way, but he doesn't. Pitt secondary playing deep, and he pitches out to Allen. Good play by Troy Hill, number 22. Had a good game against West Virginia last week. You got to remember that Kelly Lowry is uh, six feet tall, and he can run. He has already scored six touchdowns by rushing. Well, I'll tell you what, Bob. They're down to their last timeout. Seven seconds on the clock. Looks like the home run ball. That's what he got to try to go, and let's say Tommy Flynn just went in to tell him something. And let's see who we got going back there deep now for the Panthers, along with Tommy Flynn. We got Weatherspoon back there. Melvin Dean, Troy Hill. Uh, Flynn is bringing over Roy Weatherspoon to the near sideline, saying, "Come on over here, laddie." Now there's that home run ball flopped up in the air and intercepted. They've got a marker on the field to keep running. It's a great play as he's coming up the sideline and trying to go out of bounds and it's knocked out of bounds but can't get there in time. And the time will have run out on the play. Holy Toledo, there's a marker on the play we told you about. And we'll have to wait and see. The half cannot end on a certain kind of foul. If it would be against Florida State, we'd have an option here. Now let's take a look and see what they're going to do. Man, oh man, was that ball picked off beautifully in there by Troy Hill. And run back up. Well, like you said, Bob, Flynn moved him into position. That's what that's what you need in that secondary is a good field general, and Pitts got one with Tommy Flynn. Well, they sent Florida State sent all three receivers down into one zone. And what you're looking for in a play like that is a tip if you can get it. They didn't get it. All right. Well, it's going to be the end of the half, so the foul. Now, Bo Spazio is out questioning this as he is talking to the official. So the a game cannot end or a half cannot end on a foul that would have gone against the other ball club and uh, this is what Foge wanted to talk and about. Uh, I'll tell you they're going to have to come from behind if they want to win it today but it looked like momentum might have shifted in that uh, at the end of the second quarter. Well we go back to the fact that it's the immovable object the pit defense against the irresistible force the Florida State offense. You know Tab you play your cards right I might sing that a little later in the show. Uh oh. All right it's going to be Billy Allen the deep man. Drives him all the way through. Schubert doesn't want anybody. They don't let he doesn't let too many guys kick off return. You know that or return oh, kickoffs. He, just, he, he just, just banged that one. He just kicked a 60 yard field goal on the kickoffs. You know there was a time that that was legal and you know who did it. Gunner I'm, only you would know that. Well who it, was it. He was from Turtle Creek. He went to Notre Dame. Well, I think I would know that name and he was a great football player. And he was All-American Notre Dame. He was All-Pro in Detroit. And Leon Hart. You got it. That's also the, guy the that first guy to win the Heisman Trophy. Huh? That's correct. And the last of that one. Oh, there comes the secretary. Gets out to the 25. Oh, 13 to 7 is the score. Kelly Lowry is the Secretary of State. He's the quarterback. Secretary of Transportation is Greg Allen. And the Secretary of the Interior is our Senator Tom McCormick. While we're getting ready to start up here, Lowry, the quarterback of Florida State, who's in the game, has attempted 14 passes. He's completed nine, has had one interception for 103 yards and two touchdowns. All right, over the ball is Tom McCormick. They've got that guy Hester flanked out. Watch him. Mix up in that backfield, it seemed to me. Sort of a broken play. I'm not sure exactly where there was or not, or whether Billy Moss is the guy that just flat out broke it up. Cedric Jones, the fullback, 
did a little or nothing on the play and the Panthers are fired up and it does indeed look as though they are going to say let's keep this game under control so the ball will be on the 25 yard line. Bob Bukowski had that play diagnosed from the word go and they couldn't move him off the spot they were running to. All right now it is Jesse Hester far to the left. Lowry the quarterback going for a deep one and it's no good up on the 45 yard line it was well defended it was intended for Ouija Thompson coming across from the flanker spot. I'll tell you Bob on that play Caesar Alvester who's one of the one of the fine linebackers for Pitt was really dropping back great on that coverage. Did you see that tab. Well not only that the Pitt defensive line blew the Florida State offensive line five yards off the Boskowski ball. came right into Kelly Lowry's kisser and said that's enough of this. Act. All right Lewis Berry is in the punt now he's a good one one step punter by the way. And look at him hanging out there. Drives Flynn back to the 27, to the 30, 35. Tries to get up the near sideline and is belted as the action is hot and heavy down there between a couple of the big babies, big number 67 and Sam Restivo. 39-yard punt, good hang time. But I'll tell you one thing, this guy that punts the ball, Barry, allows only one step. I've never seen a real good one-step punter, but this kid is that. Oh, he hits some high, Bob. Mm -hmm. They sail up there. All right, one now. was way up above our line of sight. Now we've got uh, Congeni going in there with a wing tee to the near sideline. Dropping back to the 30, crossing goes to McCall. Fumble the ball. Was it complete? That's what we got to find out. Ken Rowe hit him. Pitch ball, Bob. It's pitch ball. So they ruled that that was a completed pass. Joe McCall got really belted hard there, and Matt Kim boom popped in good. Jimmy's going to go out to the running back coming over the center. Well, actually in the flat. McCall, a good reception, but a better hit by Mack. He just Ooh. sticks the shoulder in there. The ball goes flying out. Jimmy before that, was 11 of 17 for 112 yards. And I'll tell you what, fellas, that's what you call your pro tackle, your pro hit. He banged them with that one. Yeah, that Ken Rowe sitting in there was really the guy that did it, the linebacker. Now we're going with him, and he breaks into the open. McCall. And you know what saved him from going about another 30, 40 yards was Brian McCrary, the weak safety, who tripped him up from behind on the 45-yard line, or he'd have gone for a huge yardage. Well, I've noticed it from the opening gun. I've never, I won't say never, but I haven't seen Joe McCall run this well all season. And it's, uh, they're going to need him this second half. There's no doubt about it. The pit offense needs Joe McCall, and he's running well. Give Daddy high five. Okay, now they come to the near sideline. The Panthers do with Billy Wallace. They're split in. And Jimmy, play action pass to McCall. Instead, throws it to in and out of the arms of the intended receiver, Bill Wallace. That pass was perfectly fired by young John Conjemi from Lauderdale Lakes, Florida. And Billy Wallace that time just could not hold on. Well, hey, Froggy, it didn't look like Fred Bolitnikoff on that one. Maybe he didn't bring the stick him with him today. I think he was looking for the touchdown before he caught the football. Darrell Hess points out a good thing, too, that by, watch this again. Kajemi's going to drop straight back, a delay. You see uh, McCall going up the center. Kind of a wobbly pass that maybe Wallace just couldn't get his hands on. All right, now there goes McCall on a delay, and he goes across the 40. And down to uh, Marilyn McIntyre, blocking in there nicely as Kenny Rowe comes firing off the ball. I'll tell you something, as you watch the, the switching back and forth now of McIntyre and Bailey, Darrell Hess points out that starting scales in the ballgame could very well have fired up Joe McCall and said, hey, I'm going to play some football. He didn't like the idea of getting beat up by yep. that freshman, Bob. Well, that's good to have that type of competition. Now it's a third down and about a long four for Conjemi with a wing tee left. Over the flat, got his man on a 35 and driven backwards. It'll be very close to the first down, not quite. Joe McCall caught the ball. John McClain, the outside linebacker, popped him, and it'll be fourth down and about, as I see it, five or six inches. Let's see how they play it. Well, that was a great catch by McCall. He was, he had a, a, a defender draped all over his back, and that was a great catch. This is going to be awfully, awfully close. Well, I guarantee it's not a first down. Now, you forget that part of it. They're going to measure it. I, my eyes tell me no, it is not a first down. The stick 
Well, uh, hold on a minute. I thought with the way I'll I was watching the, the guy, he was on the 35-yard line. Now it could very well be very close to the. First I think we got a answer. Bob. I think we got a pit placement that time, and I think maybe we're going to see a first down here. Well, yep. it's about time. We haven't right. had a spot all day for the Panthers. Well, no, now let's see. short by an inch. Answer. One inch. Well, what's going to happen is that I have to drive up to Slippery Rock with Earl Birdie to make a speech for the first annual Slippery Rock College Hall of Fame induction. And I might ask Mr. Birdie about some of those spots. Check on that, Bob, after the game. Yeah, I will. It won't do any good, though. <laughs> it will be after the fact. Now, the Panthers, are they going to run the ball? What are they going to do? They're going after it. All right, let's just see to whom they give the ball. They'll come from out of the eye. McIntyre's the fullback. Got two tight ends in there. They're going everything they can bring up. And Jemmy. Straight ahead from Jemmy. First down on a quarterback keeper. Gutsy call. Right over Jim Sweeney to center. I'll tell you what, we haven't said it yet today, boys, but Jimmy is playing one heck of a football game. He looks, uh, and he's playing it against a first-class Florida State team. Well, I think what's good for the Pitt quarterback situation is they're all similar. Angelic had a good week of practice this week and maybe pushed Jimmy. Look at a surge of this Pitt offensive line. You see Christie leading the way. Here comes Freilich just mowing Carricker down. It was awesome. It takes somebody like those two guys to do it. Character weighs 260. It's a, it's a secretary of defense, isn't he? Yeah, um, that's right. He's secretary of the defense. We open up his cabinet door. All right. It's first down. Kajemi rolling right on the play option. And fires upfield and cut on the 11-yard line. Beautifully down there by... Billy Wallace, the split end, he went wide there and finally uh -oh, driven Kinjemi's out of bounds by Ken down. Rowe, and Kajemi's hurt for a moment. He got really racked, and they're going to ring his bell. We'll take a look at it. I think Kajemi will be all right. He got the wind knocked out of him. This is John Kajemi at his best. He throws well on the move, and he sees the field well. He's going to throw off that back foot and still get 40 yards on the pass, and Wallace makes a great catch. First down at the 12. All right, now let's we'll see. The officials have called a timeout, so that means to me they got to take him out for one play. We'll take a look at the thing. You know who hits him? Kenny Rowe, the linebacker, and I mean he really racks him. Here's Kajemi rolling right, and he sees the receiver. He knows he wants to go to Wallace. It's a matter of Wallace coming open. As you can see, the, the, the secondary coming up, meeting him head on. Kajemi throws at the last second. And then, bang, now here's young Chris Jellick. Is this his first time in? I think his first time all season in the game, Bob. He well, played against Temple. He was a mop-up man. Played that, well, too. That's right. That's correct. All right, he's a sophomore at 5'11". His daddy was a great football player. Played for the Mount Lebanon Wildcats. Out of the eye, young uh, Chrissy Jellick. Play option and straight up the slot they go with a deep back and McIntyre and uh, moved it down. Now you can leave the leave him in there as uh, Garth Jacks, the outside linebacker, a sophomore, 6'2", 205 pounder, makes the tackle. Now going back into the ball game is Wallace and coming in with him, fullback Mark Bailey out of the King of Prussia. Now it's time for the Pitt offensive line to take control of this game. We have a new quarterback in. Florida State will probably be looking for the run because they won't expect Jimmy to throw. The offensive line has got to do it in open holes. I'll tell you, the Pitt doctors are down there working on Jimmy right now. He's up off the bench. Jellick, cut, touchdown. And it's Dwight Collins. <laughs> now, how's that for a youngster coming off the bench? He picked, he picked that. Collins just picked that ball right out of that other guy's hands. Interference, though. Well, we got away with it, I think. No, we didn't. We call it back. Yeah. Col Collins I thought we got away with interference, but we did not get away with it. Collins pushed, Collins pushed off, and we should be able to get a, a good look at it here. Jellick is running to his left, and he runs and throws almost as well. Can't really see the call. I don't know who it was against at this point. We'll hear from the referee in a minute. But I'll tell you what. Jellick had Joe McCall wide open at the two-yard line. It didn't hit him. He forced it into coverage. Legal use of the hands during the play. First down over. Now you got to remember, though, that Jellick is running away from the man that was wide open. He was up here. It's pretty easy to see. But down there on the field of play, he had one man in mind. And if uh, Dwight Collins doesn't push off, he's got a touchdown. It's that simple. I'll so tell you. Give the kid credit. He did a job, but he rolled in. He under fire, and he, he did his job. 
It was the pitch, the uh, offense that fouled him up. All right, dropping straight back, Jellick. Now cut from behind. He was just trying to get loose and could not. A young man roared through there for Florida State. We'll pick him up here in a moment. Looked like big number 70, 45, Isaac Williams. Great surge from the Maryland State defensive line, and they needed a big play. They're moving the pit offensive line back a couple of steps. Of course, we see the sack coming in on Jellick. I'll tell you, Bob, here goes. Jemmy. Here comes Jemmy back into the ball game. Jellick did a good job while he was in there. I'm thinking yes, Maryland. I said Maryland State. I meant Florida State. Maryland was two weeks ago. Where am I? Getting the game, Dan. <laughs> here in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Now, Kanjemi is back in. One thing you got going here is a guy that can boot a field goal if he don't get six. And Jimmy out of door, and they're chasing the daylights out of him. He's going to have to get rid of it. He fires it upfield and throws it away. Wisely throws it away, and we'll see whether or not Coach Foles Fazio wants to go for three. And it looks as though he's going to send young Mr. Eric Schubert in there to do it. Scooby Shooby. Got one of those squeegee weegee shirts. Now let's see where they're going to mark it down, how far this attempt will be. They'll spot the ball on the 30. It'll be a 40 yard field goal attempt. 40 yard try. And Jimmy's holding it, Bob. Yep, on the 30. Ball down, boot up in the air. It is long enough. It is good. A 40 yard field goal here in the third period of play. And the Panthers have moved now to within the three of tying up the ball game. The score, Florida State 13, pit 10 his way, had he been able to hold on to that ball. Bill Sapio put the pressure on Lowry on that play. And Al Wenglikowski leading the cheers. Now the punt is going to be Lewis Berry. This guy, watch him, only takes one step when he punts. Tom Flynn, the deep man, back on the pit 30. 13 to 10, Florida State third period. Lots of time to play. One step punt. This time he end over Ensign. And it's going to take a Florida State bounce, but Flynn on the 30, backs up to the 28. Gets to the 35, up around the 40, fights his way up to the 45. Well, you can't say enough about Tommy Flynn, Gunner. He's really something. He need that boy. Well, they'll be the Panthers will miss him badly next year. 47-yard punt on eight-yard return. And there's a timeout of the action to score. Florida State 13. Now could Jimmy's back in the game, Bob. And he hands it off to his up back, really the fullback, and that man was banged, Mr. Bailey. Keep in mind that in the first half, Pitt missed a field goal, and that's the difference in this ball game right now, three points. Seven minutes to go on the third period of play, 13 to 10. Well, the other keep in mind, the flat Florida State missed the point after, and that might be the most damaging thing to their blow altogether. Now, with a second down coming up about long five, Kajemi on a fake, now passes it out of the side of his drop by his fullback, Marlon McIntyre out of Bell Vernon, and he got popped. I'll tell you, Gunner, uh, Joe McCall, he's having a great day yep. running the ball, but on that particular play, he picked up the blitzing linebacker and blocked him out of the play. The ball was just dropped. It could have been a big game. All right, Froggy, 6.47 to go, 13 to 10 Florida State. And it's 6.47 in the third period to play. Now out comes, uh, well, in comes Mark Bailey. And uh, Billy Wallace has come out of the ball game. Now they're going to send... Uh, Tommy Johnson wide right. Right Collins flank to the near sideline. Single setback to Jimmy. Out he goes. Caught in a beautiful juke by McCall to get away. And he's forward progress. Looks like it's about the 45 of Florida State before Kim Mack knocks him down. Let's see where they spot the ball. It should be across the 45. I'll tell you what, Bob. Joe McCall's having some game. That play, he caught the ball behind the sticks. Made that little juke and made the first down. The Jimmy's going to drop straight back, and it's nice to see that he's back in the ball game and feeling well. Once again, another good catch by McCall, and he's having one heck of a game. Really, the way the game has gone is a lot of fire, and it's a shame in the sense that Chris Jellick was unable to see it happen. Now they pitch it back on the option to McCall. McCall gets away from one across the 45 to about the 43, just barely gets across the line of scrimmage, and here comes Alfonso Kettiker, the co-captain and secretary of defense for the Florida State Seminoles. 
he may be the best defensive lineman in the country right now and character has got size he's almost like a little Gabe Rivera who's playing for the Steelers right now of course he doesn't weigh 285 not Neither far does off. Gabe. He weighs 295. <laughs> He's not far off it, I'll tell you that. All right, now Scales has flopped to the far side. Bailey Wallace to the near side. And Jemmy fires it up the middle and is in and out of the hands of the intended receiver. Is that uh, Tom Johnson down there for whom that pass was intended? Brian McCurry is the man that knocked him loose anyhow from it. Great defensive hit by McCreary. Although the play didn't work, it was a great fake on the part of Kinjemi. Had the Florida defense moving left, or moving to their left, his right, while he rolled left, found a receiver open. Third down and 19 yards to go. That's Kim Mack, a uh, linebacker on this near side, and been all over the field for Florida State. They got their nickel backfield in there. Long count, Lonnie for the offside, and he fakes the scales, and now he's going to be wrapped up from behind, and I mean wrapped. Big number 86, John McLean, 6'3", 220 pounds, stops him, and the Panthers will be forced to punt the ball. 13 to 10 the score. Florida State has the 13. With that 5-2 defense, they're using linebackers on the outside. Naturally, they're pretty quick and can move around. Some tackles. All right, now Reccia will punt from his 37 yard line. Mike Boyd, single return man. They respect Reccia's ability to punt. He bangs one off the left angle and going for the corner, and it goes out of bounds. Let's see where they're going to spot it. They'll spot it inside the 20 to the 17 yard line. That was a 31 yard punt. There's a thing that takes away a little average, but he was angling there to keep them from returning the ball. I don't think uh, Reggie was really. Time out on the field of play. Florida State 13, pit 10, back after this. Now out of the eye. Misdirection play, he's going to keep it on the action. Leaps up and gets for yardage, a marker on the play. And everybody's scrambling. The Panthers say they got a fumble football. And let's see what's going to happen. Caesar Aldisert jumps in there. There was a marker went down when Kelly Lowry jumped up and looked like he absolutely speared somebody with his feet. And there's a personal foul involved here. Let's wait and see what happens. Oh, well, they got holding on pit, Bob. Yeah, but uh, my we're making a chance to pick it up. It's going to come on the corner. What a great fake of the pitch up by Lowry. He's going to roll right. And he's big. He can run with the football. Tries to hurdle a couple of guys. I see a face mask in there. That's what yeah. I see. Let's see what the call is. Well, there ought to be offsetting penalties if there is. Troy Hill is in here. Now uh, they've missed a penalty totally on the play here, and they're going to talk it over, I think. Uh, Foz Fazio is having conniptions down there on the sideline, and uh, this officiating has not exactly done everything they want to do uh, as far as the Panthers are concerned. And let's well, see what they're going to happen, because I'll tell you, when Kelly Lowry jumped up, he came in feet first into the head of one of the pit defenders. I'll they tell you, call that for holding there. I'll tell you what, Bob, the referees have got two balls on the field. Well, we play this game with two there. balls. Now they're going to have to, let's get the call. Here it is. Pit. Bang. All right. And the Panthers get nothing but a penalty against them for a holding call. And now trying to get the Panthers up in the crowd and everything and telling them let's get going is big number 22 for the Panthers saying let's get charged up here. One thing that Tommy Troy Flint Hill. one thing that Tommy Flint said all week was that this defense lacked enthusiasm. They're trying to get it back now. Well, Troy Hill was saying let's go. Now the Panther bench is beginning to ignite itself. First down. There's another 15. There's that reverse fake. They're going to keep it though and it is Greg Allen and they nail him on the 35. Well, I'll tell you what, Bob, the Pitt student body, the whole cheering section on this side of the field is up and yelling. They didn't like that call. Now, that is, uh, I don't believe there's been one penalty against Florida State, and there have been something like four or five 15-yard penalties against the Panthers. Lowry pitches straight back to Allen. He fakes the handoff on the end around and takes it. 
Pitt diagnosed it perfectly. You see Benson coming in to make the tackle. Good stick. And their crowd is going wild as Keller Lowry drops back to the 25. Now he's going to fake the run. Pitches out wide to a safety man, Cedric Jones. He drops the ball. The Panthers try to cover it in any event. It was a lateral. And the Panthers are on fire. But I'll tell you what, Bob. Marker? There's another marker on the field. I'll tell you what. That one's against Florida State. After the, after the kid dropped the ball, uh, there was a clip. One of the Florida State linemen clipped. I'll tell you this. If they mark off the 15 yards, they'll go wild here. First time penalty against Florida State. The fans are finally saying it's about time. Well, this enthusiasm has developed into some good defensive play and some mistakes on the part of Florida State. All week in practice, this Pitt Panther team has been looking for something to spark them. They're down by three to Florida State, and they're playing well defensively, and the crowd has helped. Well, That's Troy Hill foul. went out there and personal said... Foul. Right. All right, That's a personal foul. foul. Troy Hill is the guy that's got this crowd going. He got out there that huddle and says, come on, let's get going. And they're fired up now, so it'll be third down and a ton. A third down and nine miles, Bob. Yes, it's all of that. Covered wagon territory. This could be a great spot if they can hold him right here. Kelly Lowry still got it. And they grab him up from behind him and bring him down on the 17-yard line. Beautiful bit of Tony Johnson came in there along with Al Wenglikowski as Johnson tried to block him out of there and could not. And they're forcing the Florida State Seminoles there's to take the ball away. Bob, there's Troy Hill. Look at him. He's, he's, got the, he's yelling at the crowd to get fired up. Wenglikowski, a super play on that. I hope we get a chance to look at it maybe later on. All right. Now it's Barry Barco. One-step punter, deepest he's been in his own territory. One-step bad punt, but he angles it up to the near sideline, taken by Flynn, and he dials away, and he goes out of bounds on about his own 47 right in front of the pit bench, and this crowd is on fire. Lewis Perry made the stop. Punt of 37 yards. Well, the 37 pit, yards. The pit student body is still on its feet. They're calling, they're calling for their team to move in. All right, third down. Let's see. It's first and 10 with 3.02 to go in the third quarter. 13 to 10 in favor of the Florida State. And out they come. Jim Sweeney over the ball. Run Jimmy at quarterback. No fooling around there. Wow, what a rack up. There is some kind of a smack by big number Kim Mack. Oh, that's linebacker. He nailed Chucky Scales straight up. What a hit this is. Unbelievable. It was a, a hit that was propelled from the secondary. Here you see number 45 coming in, and he'll make the tackle. And Isaac that's Williams. Isaac Williams. What a stick. Say, uh, Pitt's not the only one fired up. Florida State's come to play, too. Yeah, second down and nine. Single setback. Wallace split out. There goes uh, the fullback, McIntyre. Fighting hard for yardage. See where they're going to spot the ball. You almost want to say where they are, and then this is what's happened in the past. You don't until they do. Now the ball is on the 45 of Florida State. The Jimmy's going to go to McIntyre right here. He's going to run along the line of scrimmage, looking for a hole. Outruns the defensive line, finds one, picks up a couple of yards. Hit. Big play here, third right. and about three. Bill Wallace goes far to the far sideline. Dwight Collins to the near sideline. Single setback. And Jimmy over to the side to Dwight Collins. Jukes away from one. First down on the 35. I'll tell you what, Bob, that was close to a late hit right there. Eric Riley, the cornerback, makes the stop. The Panthers send their other fullback in, Marlon McIntyre, with a play, and they bring out Mark Bailey. That play was made because the secondaries the Pitt plays against has to respect the speed of Dwight Collins. And Dwight Collins goes far to the right. They bring uh, Billy Wallace to the near sideline. From the eye formation. Break to the up back, get to the deep back, scales running straight ahead, and he's finally knocked down as he crosses the 25-yard line by Brian McCrary, the wide safety. And down he goes, and what a play that was. Absolutely great blocking by the pit offensive line. 
We're going to take a look at the blocking here. The handoff is going to go to Scales. Misdirection play, and he's got Dahl and also number 72 out in front of him. Tommy Brown. Tommy, Tommy Brown. Brown. Tony Brown. Now they have to do something They here. shoved him 10 yards downfield on that play. Look at his There's block Dahl. here. And something else we might be able to take advantage of, but they lost a very big player. Kim Mack, he has to go off to get his shoe put back on. He's a linebacker. He's been in a lot of plays. How they have it off now on a reverse, and it's going to be Dwight Collins, and he's going to be driven out of bounds for a loss. They didn't fool anybody that time. Well, the Seminoles were not biting on that one. That's what's called staying at home as Rocky Kimsey, who does a 4 4 40. Came across from the corner to knock Dwight Collins. He stayed right with him when he came around on that reverse. And Kinsey's only a sophomore, so that's a headsy play for a sophomore. He held his ground and made the play. All right, now Pitt has made a couple of Tom Johnson's come out of the game. Clinton Wilson has come back in. Single setback. Billy Wallace to the near sideline. And Jimmy rolling to the right. Takes that one and gives off for a straight ahead pop by Marlon McIntyre. And one thing that Foz is doing is staying right in the spot for the field goal if he's going to need it. As Garth Jacks, the outside linebacker, makes the stop. Well, this is a throwing down for the Panthers. They're about third and nine, and Florida State knows it, and Jimmy knows it, and all the receivers know it. I don't know. I get a feeling we ought to keep our eyes on Clint Wilson, the tight end. One of the things you ought to do is wonder what Foz Fazio sent in for the play. And we'll find out right here, friends. As Pinjenny. Now they call a whistle, and there may be a delay here. End of the, end oh, of the third the quarter. The delay is obvious. That's the end of the third period of play. So there it is, the end of the third quarter. Florida State 13, Pitt 10. We'll be back. For State has given up more points than they've scored in the fourth quarter. The opponents have scored 43 points to their 33. I'll tell you what, uh, fellas, uh, Coach Bowden seems to be wearing a hole in that uh, carpet over there. He's pacing back and forth like a wounded buck. All right, it's a uh, big play coming up here now. Third down, nine to go. The ball resting on the 20 of Florida State. Can Jimmy, single setback. Lobs one for six. He got it. Touchdown. He we'll had see if there's the any way. markers open. Yeah, Holy there's one team. there. I see about a marker. I think there's one on the 10-yard line. Let's see what they're going to call. It's on FSU, Bob. State, and the touchdown, hell, stand up. Holy Toledo, it comes for a young man by the name of Billy Wallace out of New Jersey. This is what you call a fly pattern. Kajemi straight back. Wallace flying down the sidelines, heading right to the corner. Scales, Chucky Scales lined up a little wide. He beat Rocky Kinsey, the cornerback, on the play. There's a holding call that's going to go against the Seminoles and will be declined. Well, he was running like Bill Wallace. Chucky Scales straight down the sidelines, wide open. We're going to get a look at it from the opposite side of the field. You can almost see Scales running by the defenders right there. He's three yards into the open. Touchdown. I tell you, that cornerback said, where did he come from? Well, now let's see what we can do here. Eric Schubert will try to make it... Uh, Eric 17. Automatic Schubert, Bob. How many in a row is that? 43. I would say that's not only pretty good, that's excellent. That's his 43rd straight, Bob. That is called supreme. And so the Panthers now have taken the field goal away. You see what that extra point does that they missed? It's 17 to 13 pit. We'll be back after this. I like the way the forest sounds. Well, from the 50, there'll be no run back here. They put the 15-yard penalty on following. Well, I shouldn't have said that because they're going to run it. Now it's a muff. Now it's a free ball. They kick it in there. you got a shot for a safety. And that's little number four, Jesse Hester. And he's wrapped up on about the five. And did they fumble the ball? They just know one thing. They just covered the ball. And they smothered him to a 15-yard penalty. And, of course, I think that was a smart kick by the way uh, Mr. Shuby Dubert put that one through because... He made it kick in such a fashion to make it hard to handle. Well, you make it, you make it happen. The pit players knew they had the momentum. They forced the muff. Schubert kicking it low at the feet of Hester. He picks it up. Fortunately for Florida State, he gets out to the six. All right, now they're putting on Kelly Lowry. Don't count this game over. With this is look for some football flying around. Here comes Lowry. Play action pass. Up the 
the middle he goes, intercepted and dropped. And that was a sure popper right there. Troy Benson had it in and out of his hands. He's walking in for six if he could hold on oh, to it. Oh, he saw the goal line, Bob, and he forgot to catch the ball. Well, as you said it before, Bob, the linebackers have their hands all wrapped up. We're going to watch Ra Lowry play action pass to Allen, and he's looking. He had the man open. But Benson just cut across at a great angle. You see his hands all taped up. He couldn't get his fingers on the ball. That pass was intended for Hassan Jones. Now it'll be second down and 10 on the six yard line. There they give it off now to Greg Allen, the Secretary of Defense. Look at him run. That transportation secretary takes that ball out for a first down. He is a great, great runner. You're looking at one of the best in the nation in Greg Allen. I'll tell you what. They're projecting Allen as a first or second round draft pick, even though he's small. He's got great speed, 4.28 in the 40. Flynn misses a tackle. You don't see that often. Troy Hill comes up with a big stick right here. Knocks his wheels out from under him. He's well, the guy has great balance when he runs, too. All right, now they've got first and 10. The ball on the 28-yard line. They're all on 28. A turnaround option. He passes it back, and it's caught out there by Greg Allen. And if he had only one man to beat, and if he beats that man, you can watch him go for six. I'll tell you what, that was a pretty nifty play by Lowry. He's uh, thrown his last five passes have been incomplete, and he's going seems to be going back to the ground. I'm surprised that they're running this option so well. Lowry rolling out right. He waits to the last second to pitch out. Florida State doesn't run the option all that often. They're strictly a four-play offense running the football. Well, they got enough of it to pick up five yards, and it'll be second down and really four. Pick up a six, second down and four. Pitt leading in the ball game, uh, 17 to 13. Now, Kelly Lowry, going to have to run, fires it up the field instead. It is caught up around the 50-yard line by Hassan Jones. And here come the Seminoles of Florida State. And I'll tell you something, Tom Flynn made the tackle. What the Panthers have done by going into the lead of 14 to 13, they have forced the Seminoles to go for seven. Well, you can't feel comfortable with a four-point lead against this team. They have too many weapons. You're going to see one of them right here. He runs a perfect route. He knows what to do when he sees Lowry scrambling, finds a seam in the secondary. Great catch. That's exactly what he was, a seam. Weegee Thompson has gone wide right on a flanker. On the eye, Kelly Lowry on the option. Going to keep it. Bang, down he goes. Wow. And he is racked up by a gentleman by the name of Ray Weatherspoon, a youngster out of Clareton. Weatherspoon just got the starting assignment before today's game. Billy Callahan had been playing at safety, at strong safety, and Weatherspoon has had a couple of weeks of uh, great work in practice, and now is the time for him to start. He's playing well. All right, Danny Atay has come in under there behind Bob Boskowski, giving him a little rest. We've got a second down and nine situation here. And Danny Atay has moved up over here. So we got Boskowski and Atay in there. Beating up the defense. Kelly Lowry, one step drop, fires it outside to Hester. And Hester stays in bounds. Thought he went out of bounds, and he did across the way. And so Hester, who ran for a lot of yardage, is going to have that brought back, although he gets a completion driven out by Troy Hill, one of the co captains from the left corner. You don't want one of these receivers to get loose. They all run four threes. Here we take a look at. Hester, he'll turn it upfield right here. Although, he, as you watch his foot, you can see it go out of bounds. I think we were blocked by the official there, but the officials ruled him out of bounds. All right, it'll be third down coming up. Uh, let's see, he's got to be awfully close to the first down. So there, the ball is over there, and they're taking a good look at it. Far across the field, as you look at part of this huge throng on a brilliant little sunlit day in the city of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. It's going to be very close. They'll bring the ball out now. Uh, for the Florida State Seminoles, this would be a great play for them if it's really short. I guess we should mention the fact that even though it's 70 degrees, as far as the fans are concerned, it's uh, it's probably close to 100 degrees on that field. Well, that shouldn't bother Florida State. Well, they're used to hurricanes down there. Right, and they're used to high humidity. Tallahassee right on the water. All right. Here is a 17-13 ball game pit with 12 minutes to go in the fourth quarter. Bring to the near sideline now, Hassan Jones. From the eye, All-America candidate Kelly Lowry. Six feet one, 225. Lowry gives.
comes to Greg Allen. The Secretary of Transportation cracks off the right side, going in behind Jamie Dukes and Herbie Harp, along with Tom McCormick, the Secretary of Interior, and he picks up a yard or two. I'll tell you what, Bob, the Florida State Sentinels are fighting back. They got Damn. the ball moving. They moved it from their own six-yard line. Lowry's going to take the snap from center and just pitch out. Pitch out all the way. Allen gets a hold of the football, and he's looking for a hole here. He really can't find one. That was a great play. He got a great block by John Ayanata. Tell you that, to move him up. So now, here they go. Another first down on the 35 of fifth. Kelly Lowry takes the give to the up back, drops off. Down the field he goes. No. In and out of the arms of Jesse Hester, who can flat out burn you. Melvin Dean and uh, Ray Weatherspoon covering on the play. And that was good coverage by Weatherspoon and also Melvin Dean, who had Hester covered covered deep in behind him. I'll tell you, Weatherspoon almost got a hand on that ball. He, that, that ball went right past his hand. Well, as they come down the field from the, where they got out of their impossible yardage out of the six-yard line, almost had a safety, had that to worry about. Then you had them on the sixth, and they get out of there. And then you remember the ball that was intercepted and dropped by Pitt. And that young man will think about that a long time. Kellen Lowry rolling right, pitches back to a secondary defense, Greg Allen, and Allen has met and smashed across the 35-yard line. Tommy Flynn came roaring up to popping from the free safe spot along with Troy Hill. What a great hit. I think it was Tommy Flynn that came in from a secondary spot and put his head down. Sapio got a pop as we take a look now the Florida State Seminole cheering they're very happy about their drive this is some football game ladies and gentlemen and it's far from over 11 39 to go 17 to 13 the score the Panthers have the lead now they send a flanker far to the right Hester to the near sideline Lowry dropping back on the play and the whistle blows the play dead. Too much time to lay on They have put a Tony Johnson in and along with they have two split ends. Jamie Dukes has come into the ball game too at uh, strong guard. They use what they call a quick tackle quick guard center. This McCormick, by the way, was a walk-on player. And then Jamie Dead Duke. Ball. Here's the play. Well stud. Offense. Third down over. All right. Third down comes over again. That man sounds a little bit like a southerner. He's got a kind of a strange accent, don't mm. you think, Bob? You don't Maybe think they brought from, him from Tallahassee, dude. Might have brought him from Boston. South Boston. <laughs> South Boston. All right. 38-yard line of pit. Third down and 13. It's a big play for both teams. Kelly Lowry. Lots of time. Fires it upfield. In and out of the hands of the intended receiver, Jesse Hester. Just a little too high for the young man. Tommy Flynn covering. Are there any markers anywhere? No markers, Bob, but uh, Lowry missed his one receiver. Had him wide open on the right yeah. side of the field, far side from us. Well, if you're a Pitt fan, that's mighty good news. I'll tell you what, Tommy Flynn was counting how many yards he would have had to run back for a touchdown on that because... He didn't think Hester was going to be able to get up and touch that. Well, I'm going to tell you something else. Don't count on this guy punting the ball either. He might not. Don't count on it. You don't know. Let's wait till he boots it. He will. All right. Big high hang timer. And Flynn's going to get away from it and let that ball bounce. And the Florida Seminoles are going to put it right down at about the one-yard line. I'll tell you what, Bob. The Seminoles had everybody but the coach down there covering that punt. I think Bowden could have done it. That was a 36-yard punt with absolutely no return. Pitt 17, Florida State 13. We'll be back right after this. Well, now here's a rather interesting thing. The ball on the pit, too. And Jimmy rolling to the sideline and now fires it upfield. He's over the hands and almost a beautiful play. Just let his intended receiver a little too much. Chucky e. Scales. Gutsy call for the young quarterback, Bob. Pass it out of his own head zone. That, that was a great pattern run by uh, by Wallace on that play. He sucked up a linebacker, John McLean, number 86, and then went in behind him and was wide open. The ball just slightly overthrown. Matt Stennett out of Shaler, a freshman. Six feet, 182, highly recruited young man has come into the ball game, coming to the near sideline now. Uh, 
As you see, the play develops, sweeping left, and Rocky Kinsey stops it. One of the great advantages the Panthers have right here is they know that they got a man that can boot that ball. If he gets away his normal punt, they can uh, figure that he'll bang it down the field and give the Panthers a shot. So now we have that quarterback, fullback slop again with uh, McIntyre coming out, Bailey going in. Well, the man you're speaking of is Tony Retchie, and he's worked all this spring with Coach Abrams, Abraham on uh, on punting, and it's worked out to his benefit. That pit calls time, Bob. Yeah, so Jimmy wants to talk things over on this play. It is a third down play with eight or nine yards, about eight to go, as I see it. So the timeout has been called, and the way, the way the referee just figured that is the timeout went against Florida State. Uh, he what? just pointed right at Florida State as though he, they'd called a timeout. Now, I don't know what But the way uh, Kajemi came off the field, I thought we had called a timeout. Well, I'll tell, you, I'll tell you, Bob, I'm just looking at the scoreboard, and whoever's running the clock up there has counted it against Florida State. So they've got their whole defense back over on the sidelines for another one of those conferences. Do you suppose uh, Bob's got a computer over there or something, and he's got the analysis uh, on the sideline, Bob? No, but I know what they do, frankly, and that is to get them all over there on a certain situation where it's a, like it's a pass situation. They tell them what they want to do on their certain keys, and it's uh, one of the few ball clubs that actually gets everybody over there on defense and talks to their defensive coordinator. I tell you, it almost looks like the infield playing for uh, one of those punt squeeze plays, Bob. Now we're going to see Pitt only had about 10 men on the field. We better get ready to have 11. It helps a lot to have 11. Now we have also going back into the game, Chucky Scales along with uh, Mark Bailey at fullback and Congeny going back in at the quarterback. And it'll be third down and about eight yards to go. The ball on the five. The score, 17-13, fourth period of play. The Panthers leading. From the eye. Jimmy giving it now to his halfback coming around. He's going to lose some ground. He's horse collared and ripped out of bounds on about the six yard line. And I mean, ripped. Chucky Scales wrapped by a guy named Dave Ponder, 6'3, 250 pounds. Did you see that guy I thought, run? I thought he was going to take the kid's head off. Mm. My, my. I think what Pitt had planned is they had three wide receiver offense in there. They wanted to get Florida State dropping back and then fool them with a run, but it didn't work. All right, now we got Mr. Boyd, Mike Boyd up there. And it's up to Reggie to haul off and bang one for the Panthers. But Florida State figures to get great field position out of this. Looks like the Florida State's got the rush on, too. There's a marker on the play. There comes the punt, beautifully driven back to Russell Davis. And he's going wide, Jones, C.D. Jones. And there's another marker down. We got markers all over the field. One back on the seven on a 47-yard punt. A Florida State player down on the 45. And two markers, one on the 39 and one on the 36. So we have three markers on the play. A Florida State player injured. And the punt was 47 yards. Let's wait and see where this one comes from. Wow. I'll tell you, I can hardly see the field. There's so many markers down there. Well, they may have a lot of changes around. We'll watch it here. It's an illegal procedure call on Pitt. I didn't see any movement in the offensive line, but that evidently is what they're calling and probably a, a clip on the return. Great punt by Reccia, who's now a two-step kicker as compared to a three-year ago. I think the, the fans were looking for a clip on that play, but I think he got him more on the side. And that's great coverage by the Pitt Panthers. Sapio coming in and making the tackle. Oh, yeah, they strung him way out all across the field. It's number 28 who's down for Florida State. Rocky Kinsley, defensive back. Sophomore from Madison, Florida. To help it. I think he got the wind knocked out. He's holding his ribs a little bit. The well, they're ball. moving. Looks like we're going to have another punt here. They're moving the ball back we have down. an illegal procedure on the offense. We have a clip on the defense. They offset. All right, you heard that very clearly. An illegal procedure on the offense and a clip on the defense offsetting, negating a 47-yard punt. Well, if you can't get it right the first time, try it again. Yeah, I sure hope you can... Uh... I know one thing, that guy's from South Boston, that referee. 
with that accent. He's from South Boston. You all. Let's see what they got coming on this one. Retchie has to bang another one, and he drives that receiver back. C.D. Jones on the 42, gets to the 50, and down he goes in the pit 48-yard line. Well, the, those penalties worked out to Florida State's benefit. Well, that was a four-yard punt better than the last time, 51 yards this time. Boy, is that Retchie, he's going to end up banging that football about as good as you're going to see. But in the meantime, Florida State will have possession of the ball to score 17-13. And there's the injured Florida State player. They just look like they're taking him apart like a robot. I hope he's all right. We don't know who that player is that's taking his number off. I think that's Dr. Lippman down there examining it. Right. Kelly Lowry gives it to the deep back, and it's uh, Greg Allen. He gets hardly any yardage. He stops him in there. Looks like Bob Shilkin from Mount Lebanon. 17. 13 Panthers, 10 minutes to go. Now it's time for the pit defense to come up big. They've had several big plays today. Troy Benson on, dropped a, a sure six points on an interception last time Florida State had the ball. Let's see if they can come up with a big play this time. Second down and nine. Short drop, long pass. Hester, what a catch. And if he's just three, it's all over. They finally haul him down inside the 10. This kid can just go, and I mean go, and that was a very great catch by that young man. The catch to the stop by Ray Weatherspoon and Tom Flynn. Watch this catch. Well, this is a post pattern run right off from the line of scrimmage. Lowry dropping straight back. He sees Hester come open over the middle. That's what we were talking about, skilled people. Now you see the 4-3 speed, and if Weatherspoon doesn't have him by that floppy jersey, it's all over. Here's the pass coming again. Great catch. Told you, Florida State's got four wide receivers that are as good as the four Steelers had a couple of years ago. All right. Uh, now, you don't really that? mean that, do you? Sure. There's no way in the world you can mean Almost. it. Impossible. Not even close. All right, now it's back to that secretary of transportation. He goes nowhere. I mean, what you mean is you think they're as good now as those four Steelers were when they were in college. To their respective when teams. When they were in college. Right. But you don't mean as good as the four Lynn Swan and Starworth and those guys Smith were for the Steelers. There's no way you can mean that. Do you? You mean that. Bob, watch yeah. Dolman on this play. Yeah. <laughs> he gets blocked. Got a helmet in back. there. Yeah. I'll tell you, that receiver could, can jump flat, jump up in the air. He may be 4-4 four, four speed, but he leaves the Earth's gravitational pull when he leaps for the ball. That's Jesse's. Jesse Hester. He's split to the left side. This is a pretty good game, isn't it? Lowry looking for Hester in the corner and broke it up. Hmm. Broke it up. Tommy Flynn was in there along with league number 20. 28 Melvin Dean. So they was, they're double teaming Mr. Hester. And that's a pretty wise move, I'll tell you. Well, as I said at the outset, this pit secondary is vastly underrated. We're going to see why here in the person of Melvin Dean, who goes right up with Hester and knocks the ball away. Hester almost caught it with one hand. I can't get over how high he jumps. How tall is he? Six feet tall. Well, he jumps about 10 feet off the ground. Big thing is you got uh, third down and nine to go, and you have a situation here where they got to score six. Field goal. They don't want. All right, Lowry dropping back. Over the middle he goes, no good. No flags on the play. Fourth down. Cedric Jones coming out of the backfield was the man for whom the pass was intended, and Chris Doman harassed Kelly Lowry Chris. and made him throw the ball quickly so that he couldn't get on target. I'll tell you, Chris Doman was coming in like a 38 Packer there. He just a 38 Packer? Yeah, you know how big they are. Oh, they were big. Yeah, and they were fast. And they were fast. You really believe those four receivers as good as Lynn Swan? Here's the field goal, Bob. All right, All right this guy doesn't miss him too often. That's uh, Phil Hall. The boot is up in the air long enough, and it is good. Bill Hall. No, now they either. settle for the, well, they, so what they're saying is that they wanted at least some points to give them a chance to win it with a field goal later on. So here we go. A timeout on the field. Pitt 17, Florida State 16. We'll be back after this. Of all the economy cars in America, many have front-wheel drive traction. But of all those front-wheel drive cars, only these four have a flat engine profile with an extremely low center of gravity 
for outstanding handling and traction. And every single one of them is a Subaru. Buy your Subaru now at one of these local dealers. We're that neighbor who's always ready to lend a helping hand. We help when disaster strikes. We help when folks need blood. We help the elderly. We help expectant parents prepare for their baby. We help veterans get their benefits. We'll teach you how to check blood pressure. We'll teach you CPR, swimming, and first aid. We're the American Red Cross. We'll help. Will you? All right, ladies and gentlemen, now Barry Barco, a freshman, will do the booting here, and we'll see whether or not they're going to try an onside kick. Tell or you whether what, they're going to build it. I'll tell you, Bob, Bobby Bowden's got more tricks up his sleeve. He's just liable to go for his onside kick. I think we got Cali in deep. Well, he All right. it away. He gets into it, and it's going to be taken down there on the goal line. To the 15 and big number 31 fighting hard for all the yards he can get, but he doesn't get outside. Billy Allen does not get outside of Pat Milligan. I'll tell you what, fellas, the Florida Seminoles are a long way from done. There you take a look at the scoring drive 51 yards on six, six plays, a minute 51 seconds, and Hall on the 25 yard field goal. 829 left in the ball game. And the four wide receivers of Florida State. Comparable to the four the Steelers had. I won't even buy that statement as we see Joe McCall in here now. And Kanjemi keeping the ball on the ground, fakes and rolls out, throws up field, and it's caught but out of bounds. Out of bounds. And the Panthers were just trying to do a Brian McCrary covering on the play. Looks like Kent Schoolfield down here trying to play official, saying the catch was yeah. good. That's that's the third time he's done that today. He, you watch it. He was out of bounds a mile. Kajemi's going to fake the handoff to McCall. Even had the cameraman faked out and roll right. Almost looked like a balloon. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. That foot. I saw that toe. Pretty close. Pretty close, but we well, can't. maybe we can save that play and run it again if Tom doesn't get tied up with two dog gun machines down there. Tommy Hewitt and our crew doing a great job. The pass is complete up there to uh, big number 24, Matt Stennett out of Shaler, the freshman. We're asking our uh, Tommy Hewitt, our director, and our crew. They're doing a fantastic job. We thank them very much for all of that. But you know, they're also covering for the Florida State Seminole broadcaster. Larry Matson, who does the voice of the New Orleans Saints, and they're sending this game back down to Florida in Tallahassee throughout all the state. So sometimes we ask Tommy Hewitt and our crew to do more than they're able to do with uh, all the darn beautiful cameras we got. All right, here we go. The ball is on the 15 yard line. They're down to about long five. And Jimmy on a straight drop, and it's caught on the 20. Spins out of the arms of one and gets for the first time Matt Stennett. And that's a very big play. Matt Stennett, or was it Joe McCall? Joe McCall. I'll tell you what, Gunner, that's a possession. That's a possession play right there. Third You're and six. A missed tackle here by Ken Rowe, the linebacker, the inside linebacker. You're going to see it. Can Jimmy a bullet to, uh, to McCall? There you see Rowe missing the tackle, and McCall turns it into a first down. But I'm going to give, you, I'm gonna give McCall credit for making a miss. It. Look at him spin away. Sure. I'll tell you what, yeah. he, that's a possession play right there. You've got to yeah. make that play. You've got to keep the ball. Here we go. All right, it's McCall running hard, and it looks like the Panthers are on fire, have been given life with what they got to do now with no ends, ifs, or buts as Henry Taylor makes the stop. If the Panthers are to win the game, they got to hold onto the ball and set a drive that just eats up the clock and keeps the football away from a very explosive Florida State team. And who's the guy you expect to do that? The guy that's had one of his better games in a long, long time, Joe McCall. The odds maker said this was a pick 'em game, and I don't know, 17 to 16 is pretty darn close. All right, right, right on the money. Here is Dwight Collins, split to the near sideline. Billy Wallace, far to the left. Give it off to McCall. McCall diving and stumbling. If he keeps his feet, he's going to go for a big, great, huge gain. He went right off the left side of the line. Who's over there? Fralick, Durando, and Sweeney. Florida State is in the middle. Well, it, actually, it's at the end of a four game road trip. Maybe they're going to get tired here. Here, McCall, I think he loses his footing on his own accord and 
falls forward, picks up some yardage. I'll tell you what, Tab, watch the line play here. He, they just moved Florida State out of the way. Look at that block by Sweeney. Look at that block by Fraley. He's blocking everybody but the referee on that play. Yes, if Joe is able to keep his feet, he goes. Alex McCall, again, struggling for the first down. He gets it, but uh, Todd Stroud, a sophomore nose guard and replacement of Brad Fujik, made the grab, but it's the first down. And coming off the field now, Marlon McIntyre going on is Mark Bailey. Coming on with Mark Bailey is also Billy Wallace. It's hard and to in comes uh, Matt Stennett in place of... Uh, one of the other players that's uh, scale. It's hard to believe that Joe McCall coming into this game averaged two yards a carry. 28 carries, 59 yards. He's doing it today. Matt Stennett has come to the near sideline. Pitching it back now. McCall, they're giving him a lot of running room. And McCall is stockled by Kenny Rowe. The Panthers lead 17-16 with 5.15 to go. And McCall is going to be a tired little youngster tonight when the game is over. Well, I'll tell you, they're giving him the ball. On that play, Mark Bailey made a heck of a block on the, one of the uh, Florida State linebackers, but he got kind of bounced off. All right, now uh, bring Bob Bailey to the near side line and send Matt Stennett far to the left. Leave as a single back. McIntyre. The give to McIntyre. Through the hole, he blows it off the side of Shilkin and goes rather off the side of uh, Durando and Fralick and Sweeney and bangs for a very close to a first down before the linebacker dropping back on him. Kenny Rowe can make the stop. Boy, well, did he bounce through there. Sweeney makes this play. He takes the nose guard and buries him, and you see it right there. And then McIntyre turns it up for a good game. Jim Sweeney, the center, one of the better setters in the country, we might add, and uh, great block on that I'll tell play. you what, he's tearing that 71 apart. That's Stroud. He's the backup nose guard. Yep. All right, now the clock is still running. The Panthers lead by one. Can Jimmy ask the Pirates to quiet down? Single setback, driving straight ahead to Jimmy, and he should have the first down. He's got it, Bob. Second time he has sneaked for a first down. Panthers lead 17, 16, 355 to go in the fourth period of play. Clock's running, Bob. It's down to 355. This is a ball control drive. All they want to do, they want to win the game by one if they can. Well, that's what they're going to have to do if they're going to do it. Because coming into the ball game now is a young man by the name of Pat Milligan, a senior out of Fort Lauderdale, Florida. They brought him in as an extra backup man. Do they best they can to bring a tired team? Fake play, passing up the middle, he goes, pulling out of the hands of the fullback, Marlon McIntyre. It was a pretty nice little pass, actually. It looked to me like McIntyre turned right instead of left. Maybe that was the difference, I don't know. They we have a number 28, Rocky Kinsey, a broken right collarbone, a cornerback. I'm sorry to hear that because that young man's quite a football player. That means they brought in Steve Bloodworth, a sophomore, Rocky Kinley will be finished for the year. That's too bad. He played a heck of a first half, didn't he, Bob? That he did. Here's Billy Wallace now. Far to the left goes Matt Stennett. Out of the eye they go, and the up back, in this case, is Mark Bailey. Straight back is Jimmy. Fires it to McCall on the 50, down to the 45, fighting hard and finally knocked down by Ken Rowe. Whoa. Boy, <laughs> he, keep going, he huh? didn't want to go down there. He had about four of them on his back, and he was still standing up trying to get forward. Let me tell you this. If Joe McCall plays this way the rest of the year, it's going to mean a lot to the pit offense. Here we get an opportunity. This is ball possession passing, a short route to the running back. McCall, he's got good hands. He steps up into the pocket to avoid the rush. McCall makes the catch. He's not going down. He's having his best game of the season. Joe now, McCall. They're bringing in a two tight ends now. They got the Wilson and Tom Johnson in there. Far to the left goes a young man by the name of Matt Stennett. From the eye. Give it off to McCall. McCall drives to about the 40-yard line, maybe the 41. And another first down for the Panthers. That's 16 first downs, John Duffy informs me, for the Panthers of Pitt to lead 17 to 16 with 240 to go and the clock counting. What do you think Bobby Bowden is going to say when he takes a look at the film and finds out that running back Joe McCall hit linebacker Henry Taylor harder than Taylor hit him? That's exactly right. He's going to have Taylor blocking, blocking the flagpole down there at uh, the Gainerville. 
Seminole Bill. Right. Well, I think it's Tallahassee. They have a capital down there. All right. There it comes again. The call on a fake inside handoff. Look at him roll. And he drives across the 30. And another first down for the Panthers as they're driving the Seminoles off their feet. Did you see that, Bob? Bill Frelick took out everybody on that play. He was he was rolling like a freight train. Well, if if you remember, Pitt did this against Maryland. However, you got to hope they're going to hold on to the ball. We hope we get a chance to see what Freilich. Gary Barry's a linebacker here. McCall's turning it up. Oh. Freilich, he wasn't satisfied with one. He figures he'll take another one out. And he almost got a third one. <laughs> yeah, well, that number 43, I bet he said, oh, my Lord, Brian McCrary, what am I doing with this donkey coming after me? And when I say big donkey, I mean it in all the love in the world. The Freilich family and I have known each other for years. Oh. Here comes McCall again, runs it out of bounds inside the 15, and it's a storybook finish for the Panthers with Joe McCall, and it all goes back again to what they said when they started Chuck Scales. It may have been the thing that lit the fire under Joe McCall. I'll tell you what, Bob, there was frailing again. I can't say enough yep. about him. Right out in front of that plate. He just hit everybody, but everybody but the referee on that play. It's how would incredible. you like to have had to feed him, kid? Oh, oh my! Do you know how they did? His mother, you know, is a waitress at Oakmont Country Club, and I guarantee you. Well, this is some family, and when I refer to the youngsters, a big donkey is with all the love and affection in the world. And Dorothy is here, and her husband, and the entire Fraley family watching this young man go. Joe McCall, you know, is from Florida, by the way. Daryl has points out, and he's showing the folks what it's like to play ball up north. Up north in Pittsburgh. All I, all I can say about Joe McCall is he is certainly taking control of the pit offense along with Bill Fraley and John Kajemi, obviously. But McCall is, as far as I can remember, he's he's run every play except the one by Marlon McIntyre well, they on had, drive. They had the one pass in the and drive. The one pass. Well, well, that actually, went no, they to had McCall. two passes. They had two passes. They dropped one and they, and they connected with Joe McCall. Well, one of them went to Joe McCall. That's right. If, if anybody is going to get a game ball today, it's going to be Joe McCall as we take a look at the lovely hit Golden. Lovely who? The lovely Golden Girls, Bob. All right, Golden Girls. Yes. <laughs> I, I want you to complete your sentence. Now, what I want you to really get back to is justify how those four receivers from Ohio, from Florida State are as good as Swan, Star Wars, Smith, and Sweeney. When you get to that point in time, <laughs> I really want to hear that. Well, they're just as fast, Bob. Oh, yeah. No, they're faster. Are they fast? They have good hands. I still can't get over the fact that this Seminole defense goes over and has a meeting on the sideline. I mean, I just, I've never seen that before, Gunner. Well, it's a good way to have a good time. This drive started on the 12-yard line, and it's just coming right on down the field. Well, it's good it's at the 15, because you give McCall one or two more carries, and he'll go over the 100-yard mark today. He has 92 yards with a minute and 44 seconds left to play. Joe McCall. All right, young Tom Jenny. To McCall, there he goes off the hole by a guy, you guessed it, his name is Freilich, and a youngster by the name of Smiley comes in, and I'll tell you, this is a one-man show. You can talk all you want about McCall, and he's really playing, but you watch this guy, Freilich. Look at this, 79. Look at that. One. Well, he, he only gets a piece of him there, but Two. McCall makes the yardage on himself, uh, by himself, and now you can bump it up six yards, 98 for McCall. Let's see him get on. Then at 15 Freilich to go. Took three guys out. I'll tell you what, fellas. Pitts had the ball over seven minutes on this drive. They got it with 8:47 left to get go in the third in the fourth quarter. It looks like the clock is running down to a minute. If I were the secondary, I'd say, "Don't let me see that Freilich again." Here it comes, McCall. Back he goes, and he drives inside the 10. And they finally get about six guys and say, "Well, we got you stopped." Florida State calls timeout, Bob. I'll tell you one thing. They've, they've run over the right side of the line, all the way down the field. Florida State has been unable to come up with anything to stop it. It's just really a, a three-man show. Kajemi to McCall over Fraley. And they're just blowing that, blowing Florida State right out of the ballgame. Well, as you take a look here, the score, 17 to 16. There's 47 seconds remaining in the game. The only way Florida State can win this game is for Pitt to give up the possession of the ball with a lot of time remaining or less than 30 seconds remaining for that matter because this guy, Kellen Lowry, can move it. But we'll just watch because it's unbelievable what young Bill Freilich is doing 
But it's not totally a one-man show either because Sweeney and Durundo and Brown and Dixon and Wilson, all those men on that front well, line. You're, you're right. You're right. That ball. You're right, of course, Bob. And I, and, I, and I certainly didn't mean to imply that, but I just, I just incredible to watch Fraley block one guy and then get up and block another guy and get up and try and block a third guy. Bob McCall is be still behind him. What you do too, and you were talking about Joe Penry eating at your place at Froggies, and they were. You don't think he or any he has the draft rights oh, yeah, on I this think, kid, see? Oh, I think but Joe, you better bring the mint truck and five thousand dollars <laughs> worth of keys to open up every vault in America. I think you're gonna need it to get uh, Bill Fraley. He's a sure first round yeah. pick and he's still a junior. Got another yep. year left to pick. And I'll tell you something else, you can bet me all the money in the world will not lure him away from the University of Pittsburgh that he gets his degree and that'll be in his senior year. He's that kind of a young man. Uh, you're dead right about that, Bob. Okay. This is a keeper this time by Kajemi. And uh, Florida State calls time again. That's their last time out, Bob. If you remember, they uh, wasted one earlier, uh, I think way back in the third quarter. Well, another thing that I'm glad to see, gentlemen, with a score of 17 to 16, whether it's been as pit leading, but there's no way in the world that the young man from the University of Pittsburgh, if, if Panthers have lost this game. Troy Benson would have just absolutely died because he had the touchdown in his hands that would have been the difference in the game. But for what we're looking at now, as you see the Pitt Panthers on the sideline and the dejected coach Bobby Bowden realizing that this is a snake pit up here for the Seminoles of Florida State. I tell you what, Bob, and how about the touchdown? Uh, young Chris Jellick had called back on yep. him, though, the pass to uh, Collins down on the far side of the field. That was called back and a bunch of key penalties in the first half. It's been all Pittsburgh in the second half. Well, I give the Panthers credit for overcoming a tremendous amount of adversity, some of it created by themselves. Well, I guess we don't have to worry about going back to 1972 and 73 when back in 73, Pitt uh, had some problems and, and dropped below 500. That was Johnny Major's first year. Actually, it wasn't having problems. It was just rebuilding. And then in 72, when... Uh, Really, they, they, they lost six in a row in 1972 and 10 in a row if you go back uh, into the, the year before. Well, one thing, too, the University of Pittsburgh flat out knows that if they had, uh, when they play, there goes McCall off the left side, weaving and diving and fighting in a cross down to about the two yard line. One thing you know without any question, they claim as McCall has now rushed for over 100 yards. But had it not rained, and timeout has been called, had it not rained in Florida last year, Pitt would have just lost the ball game. Because well, they did, said they were beaten every way but Sunday. Uh, but it did rain. Holy yeah. smokes. It was like you needed a, we needed an arc to get out of there, Bob. Deep handoff to McCall going off the left side. And he's going to take it for five yards. That gives him 104 at, unofficially for the day. Joe McCall. All right, 33 seconds and counting down. 17-16, the Panthers leading. It's first down and goal to go. And a mix up. No, no, they just huh? falling on the ball, just I think, Bob. Ball. And huh? let it run out. Well, all right, I, that's a smart thing to do, too, because there's no sense in running the play away from them. And McCall has had a great day. The offense, the defense, everybody. This is it. They just fell right on it and walk it away from it. The Panthers that's are going to go away. Not over quite yet. They're getting down. One flat out. That's it. I had to get one more flat out in because I was hung up on a phrase that I'm never going to say again as long as we flat out play this game. As long as we flat out play it. I'm out. That's right. A final score. Panthers 17, Florida. Back in September, if you had made the bet that the Pitt Panthers would be here on New Year's Day in the snow and cold weather of Pittsburgh, you would have gotten a lot of football experts and fans to agree. Not much was expected of Pitt in 83, but surprise, the Panthers rung up eight wins, lost only.